cool. Make sure this is working. And I see a lot of wind blades in the chat. Hey, everybody, how's it going? How you all doing today? My name is Zach Aguilar, the voice actor for Ether and Genshin Impact. And today I am joined by the voice actor for Noel, Laura Faye Smith. Hey, Laura, how you doing? Hi, I'm great. How is everyone? What up, everybody? Oh, right now, yeah, people are spamming the thing. So, Laura, um, w something that they do here is because my character doesn't really um, doesn't really <clears throat> talk that much, <laughs> and it's due to him being like the player character, sort of like a, a, a <laughs> like a, like a silent character, you know. Right. Um, <laughs> because of that, right. he does say he does have an attack move, and he says uh, "wind blade" as he shoots a little <laughs> gust of wind. Um, and Got it's, it. it's so funny. We were just talking about this before before we went live, but you said you played the uh, the player character in in a Fire Emblem game. No, it wasn't the. Pl I was Kana. Um, oh, Kana. In the Fire oh, that's not, oh, it's not a player character. Oh, for some reason, I thought it was a player character. I think he is. Well, see, I haven't played Fire Emblem Fate, so I I actually should not say that. Maybe oh. someone out there, one of your Windblades, could say, "Is that a player character in Fire Emblem?" Because I don't think so, but maybe. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I I actually haven't played that that Fire Emblem either because there's a lot of them. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I don't know. I'll have to check it out. Um, and also, <laughs> I know I'm so bad at uh, introducing. My brain is mush after this week. I'm sure, like, I'm sure you kind of get how it is, Laura, when you do a bunch of auditions and you're working on a ton of different yeah. projects and. Sometimes let's... COVID is lessening here because I'm telling you, it has been a busy, busy week. And I've got like a couple self tapes to do this weekend and a bunch of auditions. It's just things have picked up for sure. Yeah. I would love to know more about that, actually. What is it? What? When did you uh, start doing voiceover? Did you do on camera first and then kind of fall into voiceover? Or was it the other way around? Yeah, you know, I did because I'm from, uh, I've lived in Portland, Oregon most of my life. And there, there just wasn't as robust of a voiceover industry there. So most people who were actors there, really a lot of it was live theater. And then there was a little bit of film TV commercial industrial type work. So I had like a film TV commercial industrial type agent. Like they don't even separate it out there. Like if you are in LA, you have a commercial agent, you have a theatrical agent, you have, you know, it, it's all split up and then a voiceover agent. And everything was kind of all together when I was starting out in my career. Right. And so, you know, the types of auditions I got were like commercials and industrials, but nothing, nothing animation video game type stuff used to come my way at all at first. In fact, the first job I ever did was like an industrial for Kroger for like their deli or something where I was like, you know, it was like it's something if you were an employee at Kroger and you were training, it would be this thing they would make you watch. Um, and that was like one of my first jobs that I did. And then uh, I want to say, I don't know, I remember exactly when it was, but I had, I'd had an agent who had gone out of business owing me a lot of money. So I was really kind of disgruntled about that. And then I signed with another agent after that who was crazy and kind of literally disappeared off the face of the earth. I have no idea what happened to her. And so that was done. And I was like, I'm done with agents. I'm just going to do theater. And then a friend of mine said, well, there's this agency that just started in town and it's voiceover only. They're called In Both Ears. You should go meet with them. And I was like, oh, you know, I don't know. And he was like, no, go do it. You know, you, you've got a good voice for this kind of stuff. You should do this. So I went and met with them. And it's so funny when people ask me now how to get into voiceover. And it's like so much harder because technology has really changed the game. Oh, yeah. Back oh, yeah. then, I didn't even audition for them, Zach. I like had a conversation with them. I went to their office and we chatted and they signed me. And I didn't have a reel. I had never, I mean, I'd done like a couple voiceover jobs, but that was it. But they were also just starting out. So I was on their roster when it was like 30 people big. And wow. um, yeah, so I started with them and they're still my agent, my Northwest agent to this day. They're fantastic. And so they're the ones who got me like the Rosalina audition for Mario Brothers and um you know, that that's where I did a lot of the work before I moved here. Um, but that's kind of how I got started. It was kind of just almost an accident because I wasn't real. I liked doing it. I liked doing voiceover when I had done it. But my main focus had been so much live performance in front of the camera or on stage. That's but amazing. You, how did you get into it? Oh, uh, so um, when I I'm, I'm California, born and raised uh, when I was young, I was about six years old. And uh, my mom, well, I think I was in, yeah, I was like in kindergarten and my mom said, you know what? Uh, my kid is cute and he seems pretty funny. 
I want him to be an actor. And so then she <laughs> decided to uh, get me like an on-camera agent. I had like a, a print agent um, and she would call up my school every week or well, as often as she could get away with it and say like, oh yeah, Zach is so sick. C come here, honey, cough into the phone a little bit. <coughs> yeah, he's so sick. Um, and then I wasn't sick at all and we would just be going up to Hollywood almost every single day, audition, 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 audition one after the other uh that was oh that was such a long time ago i remember did you, did you love it did you i mean were you one of those kids who was like really passionate about it or was she kind of the one spurring you on or yeah you know i was i was a strange kid um <laughs> i was the kid who would go into the room because they so i i just remember this one time where um i went into uh this this casting room uh, for I think it was like a Levi's print thing or some sort of like print print work audition and all the other kids were coming out with like pieces of candy and I came out with like a bunch of oranges so um, <laughs> I don't know why that happened but yeah I was just a little kid I don't I don't think I really knew what I was doing honestly I don't I don't mm -hmm. remember if I loved it or if I hated it but I think it what it became normal life for you at a certain point, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I think what I think what it came down to was I just I think I wanted to live a normal life. Like I saw what my friends at school had, and I just kind of wanted that. And so then my mom kind of took me out of acting uh, back yeah. then. So I I did a few things. I did some print work. I did some small little like short films. Did like some commercials, um, and then I I got out of it almost completely lived my life normally up until I was about 12 or 13 years old. At this point, I'd loved video games. I'd loved animation. I'd loved all that kind of stuff. So I decided, oh, like voiceover, this looks cool. I checked out some voiceover stuff. I thought these voice actors would actually look exactly like their characters looked. So I Googled them. I said, wow, this is so oh, strange. Really? <laughs> I was like, this is so weird because these people don't don't look anything like their characters. This is so interesting. And so it kind of opened up a whole new world for me. I, I took a, uh, some voiceover classes specifically. I told my parents I wanted to get back into acting at, you know, 12, 13. And my mom was thrilled. She's like, yes, we got him back. Um, <laughs> and, uh, right. and after that, I, I just kind of pursued voiceover uh, just by itself. And then I ended up winning a competition at uh, Anime Expo in 2014, Hi. which yeah, exciting. that was like my first big studio role. And it kind of led me led me to greater things. It just kept snowballing from there, you know, meeting people, making connections, getting the opportunity to audition. I had um, one of my first directors actually walked me into uh, an agency. So uh, yeah, it's been uh, quite the journey. <laughs> but that's super cool that you mentioned, I saw some, some people in our chat too were mentioning uh, Rosalina. Great. Uh, what is yeah. what was that like for you trying to like yep, getting Rosalina. getting that getting that role? How does that how do you get into something like that? Like in Mario, that's huge. Well, that was just an um, audition that came to me through my agency. So Mario is recorded in Seattle at Bad Animals in Seattle, and. Um, well, it was for me because I lived in Portland. And so they, I, I, I'm the, I think most people know I'm the third person to voice Rosalina. Um, and I don't know why they moved, you know, they've, they've moved through different ones. They don't really have to explain it to you if they change it out. Um, yeah. But I got the audition and they basically had asked me to try and voice match the previous Rosalina, which was Carrie Kane, and then to put my own spin on it. Like that was, I think, the directive in the audition. And so I did that. And then I got a call that they wanted me to come in for what they called a directed audition, which meant they were in Seattle and I was in Portland in a booth and um, they basically did the same thing. They said, okay, you know, go ahead and try and voice match this. So they played me some voice samples from the previous and then they said, okay, now do it and put your own spin on it. And then they said, um, and now we want you to do it as a cat. Cause this was right before super Mario 3d world. And I was oh, like, what? Gosh. Cause I, and I just had no idea what they were talking about. And they go, yeah, she turns into a cat at one point during the game. So um, can you do it as a cat? And to say, do it, it was all a lot of efforts and things. And then there were some lines, but I was, I had no idea what to do. 
So I um, was there alone in the booth and I'm just like started making all these cat noises. So I'm by myself just like, <laughs> I'm like, like I'm kind of reading actions going, okay, sliding down a wall. What would that sound like? And I go and go and nobody's coming on and saying, giving any adjustments or telling me to stop. So I just keep going. And it felt like forever. I mean, it probably was like five minutes or something, but it felt endless. Yeah. And then, yeah. then finally I just stopped because I had run out of ideas and I, there was a silence and then all of a sudden the voice mic comes on on the client side and they're laughing and they're like, okay, thank you. Bye. And I was just like, oh my God, either I just made the biggest fool out of myself or that went really well. And I didn't know which, and I walked out and there was an engineer sitting there like reading his magazine. And I was like, Hey, how do you think that went? And he was like, oh, I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. And I was like, oh, so I went away. But then a couple of days later, I got the call from my agent and she, and I had booked it. So, but I was totally uncertain when I left that audition because there was no, you know, if you're in person, you can at least see if people are like responding to what you're doing in a positive, naked way. You walk out, they say goodbye to you, but this was just suddenly like the connection was shut off and I had no idea what people thought. No, that's so, (laughs) it's so (laughs) funny because I am like reliving this experience multiple times. I know exactly what you're talking about. When did that happen to you? (laughs) Yeah, and how awkward it can be too. Like you just get that, that awkward silence. There's been a lot of things that I've done and I never can tell if they if they like it or if they mm-hmm. hated it so much they don't want to give me an adjustment and say hey maybe do it this way they're just like okay yeah thanks bye and <laughs> yeah and, and then there's times where you you're like oh my god that was so bad and then other times then you book stuff and you you just have no way to know and yeah. so much of what we do we send that you know mp3 out to our agent and they submit it and you don't ever know one way or another unless you book it. But there's, it's so different when you're doing a directed audition and you're there and they're there and you're kind of looking for those clues because you're in the room. Right. But right. it's hard when you're doing it, you know, remote. So you, you can't look for any clues and then your engineer is not paying attention either. Yeah, yeah. It's... At least they can hear the conversation sometimes. Like they can hear what people are talking about even if you can't. Um, yeah, yeah. Though, like I've do- I've done it too. Even going even going into studios, um, or going into a studio to do to do an audition, but then the client, of course, is not in Los Angeles, so they're just over mm-hmm. the phone, and they give me the headphones, yeah. and that's how we all communicate to them. And I, I remember one time I went into um, <laughs> into a studio for an audition, and I thought that what I did just completely sucked. Um, <laughs> I was not happy with it at the end. And I was like, ah, oh, man, like. You know, I put on a smile. I'm like, yeah, guys, thanks for letting me audition. And the owner comes out and talks to me. And I'm like, oh, oh, God, like, what is what does this mean? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and the owner comes out and tells me that that the client was super happy with it. And I was shocked. I thought the owner was just BSing me or trying to make me feel better. But then I, I ended up getting the role a few days later. But I was I was certain that they did not care for what I did. There was yeah. no hint of. And being like, oh, yeah, that's great. Or, oh, that's super funny. That's cool. Uh, <laughs> it's just kind of random sometimes. And, and then there's a time where they just they love on you. And you you walk out of there like, I nailed it. And then you don't get it. And you're like, wait, what? <laughs> I guess they didn't they love me, me. that actually, much. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe they tell everybody that. Yeah. Have you had that experience for, like... for on camera, though, too? Because I've had, oh, yeah. I've had that experience where I went in for a commercial thing. I remember not too, not too long ago. And I, I, you know, when you're auditioning for the commercial stuff, you're in like a, in front of a panel of sometimes you're in front of a panel of people or I was in front of like five people, I think, in the room when I went in there. I was so stressed out and nervous um, and I did my thing. And those guys looked at me with the flattest faces I've ever seen in my entire life. Just like, OK, um, yeah, thanks. Bye. Just like that. <laughs> And then, uh, and yeah. then my agent called me like I don't know what it was a week later or something, saying, "Yeah, congratulations, you got it." Like they loved it. <laughs> I'm like, "What? Yeah. What are you talking oh, about?" I mean, they I've, loved it. <laughs> then like commercial callbacks where you go in and like it'll be like four or five people in the room and they're all on their computers. Like they're no one's looking at you at all. Like they're all looking at, because I think you're on their screen. Like this, they're probably hooked into the camera somehow, but they're not even looking at you in the room. And they're just all kind of head down. And then the casting director is just you know talking you through it. Uh, but you're thinking, is any? I mean, are they like and people you know eating lunch or you know texting or whatever they're doing? And you're thinking they're not even watching. And then sometimes you book that stuff. It's shocking. <laughs> yeah, totally. 
you can never you, I, I don't know you can never really tell I, I, I wonder if they do that for a reason do they try to maybe keep they want you to keep your ego in check or maybe they've just seen so many people that their brains are mush too and they don't really know what they you want at that been, point what's been are you on clubhouse no no well if you want to you have to be invited at this point it's that's going to change for sure but it's kind of like audio chat rooms it's kind of like if podcasts and call and radio had a baby and it is so interesting because there's all these rooms with casting directors and you go in and you can listen it's always live like you know if you miss a chat you miss it but um i've been going to all these rooms with casting directors and listening to them talk and it has been so educational and it's free. Like, I mean, you just go in and you listen and um, you can go ask questions if you want. So if you have specific questions for, you know, um, there's like one room I've been in where even if you have a specific audition coming up and you have questions about, I'm thinking about doing this with this, what do you think? And these casting directors will give you advice. It's super wow. cool and they're, and they're really friendly and it's kind of a great way to network and make connections. Um, let me know if you want an invite because I have extra invites to give out right now. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. I would love that. Yeah, and then That's you just cool. make a profile and you go on. But I've actually been like, the biggest takeaway I've had is how much casting and actors are on the same team. Like we are really like what they want for us and that they want us to be the answer to their problem. And that's been like yes. really like clients obviously are a whole different barrel of fish. But but the whole thing with casting, you, you start really realizing how much they really hope that you're going to be what they're looking for. Oh, 100%. And I think that's, that's been some advice that I've heard kind of go around uh, recently, just about people saying, yeah, I want to get into voiceover. I want to do this. And, and they're kind of set, like desperately sending out emails uh, instead of, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's it's less of like, you know, please, you know, please allow me to do this. And more of like, hey, I'm really good at doing this. So I would love to audition for this because uh, and that was that was a thing that I told some of my friends as well who we're trying to get into certain places or audition for certain studios. I said, well, uh, well, I don't know. It, are like, are there any extra skills you have? And one of my friends like, yeah, I speak fluent Spanish. I'm like, oh, oh my, my gosh, God. Yeah. I'm like, why don't you, why don't you put that in your, I don't know, man. Like, I, like, I don't really want to mention if you're multilingual, like, I mean, the yeah. amount of things you can do is exponential because you can do dubbing. Um, I mean, I can't even tell you the amount of ads I'll like commercial auditions. I see where they'll say uh, you must be, fluent in uh must be bilingual fluent in spanish and english that comes up all the time yeah yeah and people don't so, people yeah, don't realize you it got an edge. so that's why yeah. I, I try to i try to pitch that to to some of my friends too saying well you you got to use that you got to tell them what you can what you can do and uh that'll be your foot in the door sometimes if if they're mm -hmm. not giving you a chance otherwise all things being equal you know you could have someone who's equally good at the english but if they can't pull off the spanish you're going to get that job if you have that Right, right. It's so interesting. It's very, it's a very, uh, I don't know what to call it, like intricate world sort of going about things and acting. And that's what I've discovered too. Not everything is, not everything's black and white. And I think, I'm sure you kind of get this a lot too. Like when people ask us, how do you get into voiceover? How do you get into acting? I mean, really everybody has a different path. Like for me, mine was, mine was winning a competition right. that like, it's the funniest thing. That's actually what got me into into voiceover oh. and spiraled and spiraled everything. So um, getting a chance I mean, with a studio. Zach, you took the words right out of my mouth. You took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> it, it, that is the biggest like realization I've come to, especially since moving to LA, because when you're in a smaller market like Portland, um, you know, it's, it's very different. Everybody knows you. Like I didn't even need to have like um, an actor's access page really. Like they made you get one. You kind of had to be in the system, but I hadn't done anything with it. It was when I moved here that I actually had to get my materials and, you know, suddenly you want your IMDB page to be up to date. And, but in, in a small market like Portland, because I was doing so much live theater and a lot of people came to see live theater in that city, that's how people knew who you were. And you got called in sometimes just by people knowing your work. It wasn't about, you know, you having to hustle that hard. Um, so it's, it's a really different market here even, but I mean, I meet people here all the time who moved here with, you know, some ambition and a dream and they're doing great and they don't have a ton of experience. Or then you meet people who have incredible training um, and that are really struggling or, you know, people with incredible training who are doing great. It's such a mix. And the biggest thing I've taken away is that there's so many different ways and so many different paths. And 
you know, no one should, you should never look at what someone else did and beat yourself up and say, oh, there's only one way to do it and I have to do what that person did because we're so unique as actors. Like totally. my particular demographic defines a lot about the type of work I'm going to do and how much of it is available and what my level of competition is. It was, I was listening to this casting director talk last night and she was saying, you know, if she says, if I post a role and I need an actor who's like in their, um, 20s but to play younger right because if you because you probably fall into this right like you can play younger than you are like <laughs> oh you have no idea how many times i'll uh <laughs> oh boy yeah like, people that is that is such an advantage right because they they don't have to because like i just filmed a show last week that had a, like the kids were the stars of the show yeah. and they they have that thing on the call sheet that says pumpkins 6 30 which means at 6 30 they can't work the kids any further because they and they have to do schoolwork. so like you shoot a scene and then the kid has to go do schoolwork, and then they come back and you shoot some more and then they're like i'm sure you went through that you know where there's just a certain hour you can't work past so if you're yeah. 20 and they don't have to follow those rules anymore they can like use you a lot more and they can you can work like an adult and that's really desirable so yes. this casting director said if i've got like you know you've got these roles of like um you know want older to play younger she goes there'll be a certain amount of, of submissions like if she posts an audition for that like a casting notice and then she goes in that 20 to 30 range she goes i'll get like 2000 submissions she said and then you go up into like 30s to 40s and she'll say you know you'll get 200 submissions and then she says and then if you go up into like the 60s to 70s you're going to get 15. and she she said because a lot of times people like as they get older they've you know moved on and they've had families and they've stopped acting and she I, said it just you know there's there's certain they were talking to a woman who was older and had had a question about you know oh will there be no work for me and she goes actually you have just so much less competition when you get older like where the bulk of that competition is is people who are starting out in their 20s and that's when you'll have just like thousands of submissions for a single role so when people start giving advice i'm like it totally depends who you are and definitely. you know what your demographic is and you know what your ethnicity is all those different things come into play um so i can speak to it from who i am but I can't, you know, you and I, our opportunities right now are completely different. Right, right. Everybody has to has to kind of find their own way. And you you mentioned something that was really funny. I want to touch on. I think I've, t I've talked about this on my stream before, but uh, for new people who are here, if you didn't know this, when I first started voice acting, I was about um, I think I was like 14, 15. Uh, basically, there was a specific test that I had to complete in order to work with studios. It was like the high school equivalency exam. And the reason for that being was um, was so that I could show that I was proficient in my studies. And uh, and it's I think it's a California only exam. I'm not entirely sure, but uh, what it allows is okay. me to record in a studio without having a teacher. Uh, so they wouldn't have to pay for a teacher. And that was something that was kind of desirable right. to the studios because they're like yeah you know we would love to hire you and we we get it like you have this this kind of like young sound but at the same time um you know one of my directors was telling me like yeah they're probably they're, they're just gonna hire an adult because they can they're they can save money they can get somebody who's a little bit more experienced so they might not take a chance on you because of this and so i ended up completing this test passing it with flying colors and um and then i started working so yeah. <laughs> and it was because of that yeah. that one little thing you know to to save money and to save time and everything to make myself more accessible and easier to work with it was just something i had to to do well and especially right now during covid like because if you're a minor there's got to be a parent on set with you and a set teacher whereas if they're dealing with older people that's less people on set like less exposure so that's actually i think played a big role in even what people would consider writing for something you know where they're like yeah we're not going to write any kids into this because we can't have kids and a guardian and teacher right totally totally and what are you what am i watching you play oh right now? <laughs> yeah so i'm just i'm running through genshin just kind of killing things okay. uh <laughs> that's <laughs> about it the i yeah, know okay. <laughs> i would love to yeah i'd love to kind of get into the hangout what was it but what was it like for you to um I, I guess for this role role that you got in genshin for noel how did you it was it the same thing you know your agency sends you out an audition or did you know no, chris I, uh actually well so I had taken a workshop with Chris, the director, um, and 
just thought he was great. Like he was just the nicest guy and really helpful, you know, and I, th that was one thing that was super exciting when I moved to LA because there aren't a lot of places to train in Portland. I'm sure anyone out there who's like listening, who's like, I want to get into voiceover, but I'm living in a smaller market. That's definitely can be a challenge, you know, like where do I train? Like, how do I go learn if you're in a city where no one's offering any kind of classes? And then you have to wonder like, does that person know what they're talking about? Like, that's true even here, no matter where you are. Like if you're taking training, like you're really hoping that you're getting good training and someone's not giving you information that's going to confuse you or send you down a different path. Right. But um, I took this voice workshop that Chris was teaching. And at the end of the workshop, he like gave his email to the class and was like, yeah, feel free to stay in touch. And I was like, I'm going to do that because I just liked him so much. I was like, I'd love to work with this guy. So I literally for like a year stayed in touch with him, just would like every now and then send him my demo and say, you know, if you have anything come up, I'd love to audition, blah, blah, blah. So he finally then sent me an audition for Genshin. And it wasn't for Noel, actually, it was for a different character. And so I sent that in and didn't hear for a while, like I kind of forgot about it. And yeah. then they contacted me and said, that, you know, they wanted me for, I can't, I think they, I can't remember if they said the character or not. Um, but I remember when I went into studio to actually record it, it was a different character than I had auditioned for. So I was like, uh, I said, I just, I want to make sure, am I here for Noel? Because I didn't audition for Noel. And they said, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you're here. This is the right thing. And I said, well, what should she sound like? <laughs> because I just didn't have any information on her at all. Um, and so then that whole first part of that first session was kind of like them telling me about her and then us like experimenting with the voice and finding what we liked and what worked. And yeah, so that's how that happened. Wow. Very cool. That's sort of, I think that's what, I can't remember exactly what happened for me, but I had worked with um, with Chris on a prior video game. And so I ended up receiving an email from him randomly. I'm like, oh, it's Chris. Man, how you been? How you doing? And he said, yeah, what's your, uh, what's your agency info? And so I gave it to him. And then I think they sent the audition yeah. to my agent. I auditioned for a bunch of different characters, uh, and then I think they brought me in for a callback. I did a callback, and I was like, yeah, I feel like it went pretty well, and um, and then they ended up contacting my agent and said, yeah, congrats, you got the like the protagonist character, and I was so thrilled because, uh, because I played a character just kind of like him, like in Fire Emblem. Um, just, uh -huh. you know, he doesn't talk, you don't talk a lot, but you just do the actions like the, ha! <laughs> Like, yeah, those, like you do the grunts <sighs> and all that stuff. So I was super thrilled to to be on board. And I didn't really know much about the game until they started, until I, until I kind of started begging to see pictures. I'm like, show me some artwork. And, they, and then they, I remember the first thing they showed me might have been of like uh, the entire world or Tavat or Devalin. And then I freaked out. I was like, whoa, this is so beautiful. This isn't just like, this isn't just like another random video game. Uh, I, <laughs> this is going to yeah, be amazing. I when I saw the graphics and stuff, I was like, wow, that is beautiful. Yeah. Uh, I was really impressed. And I and then I was like, really like her, you know, just Noelle and her costume and everything I thought was really cool too. So yeah, yeah I was excited about it. Like that was, it was really fun. Yeah, no, totally. All right. Well, I guess let's, uh, let's get into, into this this thing i haven't done any of this story before and i actually don't know a whole lot about noel so i'm excited to kind of go on this adventure with you here too it's super cool you're gonna find out you you know do you know who she is in the context of the game that she's the maid to the knights of avonius yeah. but she wants to be a knight yeah okay so i'm excited to see what uh oops that is not the right button Ooh. It was like all your things you've earned. Oh yeah, those were all my um, <laughs> all my, my my weapons. Oh, it's it's not impressive to <laughs> comparing it to. Well, a lot of I other started people. <laughs> playing it. I'm not very good at it. I started playing it. It's really impressive next to what I got going on. <laughs> oh, what do you uh, what do you play the game on right now? On, like, on my uh, iPhone. Oh, gotcha. Okay, cool. Well, then that's that's pretty nice because then you could always. Uh, it'll it'll have your same data if you ever do play it on PC. Um, oh, yeah. That's cool. I know people are a lot of people I know are waiting Honor for the they're waiting for the Switch version. Yeah, yeah, I know. I did. I have a friend who I told him about it, and he was like, "I'm sorry, I haven't played your game, but I'm waiting for it to come out on Switch." I'm like, "That's fine." <laughs> yeah, I don't have to play it. For me, it's more like, "Oh, hey, you you're playing uh, you're playing Genshin Impact. That's awesome." And 
And then they tell me that they actually picked, um, they picked Lumine, or, you know, the other character that's not my character, so... Then oh. they technically <laughs> can't play as my character. Like, thanks a lot. I'm like, yeah, hey guys, well, that's- Thanks for the support. Thanks guys, that's- Oh, that's- That's cool. You- you picked- <laughs> You picked Lumine. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> but, um... I'm Noelle, a maid of the Knights of Favonius. Oh, can you hear this, Laura, by the way? No, mm, it's- I can't. Oh, you can't? Okay. I don't think you- I mean, I don't think you really need I, to, I can but see it. like I can, I can see the, um, I can see the choices up there. Yeah, it has all of your uh, stuff. Oh wait, here's a random question: Are you on a Mac right now? Like a like an iMac? I am. Oh, you are. Okay, uh, so MacBook Pro. That's probably why, because uh, I guess I don't think Discord transfers the uh, transfers the audio over, <laughs> but uh, no worries. Uh, cool. We can just go. We can just go through okay. this. All of your lines okay. are in here, though. So, um, I'm I'm not gonna skip them because I want to hear the okay. lines. <laughs> cool. Uh, and I was doing. I did a, a playthrough with Chris on this, and uh, he oh, had me live apologies. do some of the lines. That was fun. Oh, very join cool. The As a maid, and in order to be worthy of this armor. I'm currently undergoing the Knights of Favonia's chivalric training. Chivalric training? Yes. I haven't passed the selection trials yet, but I've been asking senior knights for advice on how to become a true Knight of Favonius. I asked Amber how to make a Baron Bunny. Oh, and Kaya's been keeping me busy with various small tasks. I even asked the Spark Knight to pass on her experiences, although Master Jean grounded us shortly after. Actually, I love it when it only I've gives me one option. I'm like, okay, yeah. <laughs> Which one will you pick? I, I was worried that it might be too presumptuous to ask. I've seen you on the streets of Mondstadt occasionally, but I've always been too busy to disturb you. I just finished today's cleaning for the nights and was about to start my training when I saw you. I... Oh, if it's not too much trouble... Could I ask you for some guidance on my chivalric training? <laughs> what is this option here? You know, it's okay I, I not know. to be a knight. What is he saying? Is he like, oh, you know, you you can just be a maid. Is that what he's saying? Is, that, is, that would seem to be exactly what he's saying. Is like, <laughs> you don't have to strive for your dreams, Noel. You can just, you know, you can except the status quo <laughs> that's so bad no I'd like to get your opinion <laughs> did you choose the other one yes name. of course i could never i saw <laughs> i saw a funny tweet someone's like yeah if you upset noel zach i saw we that too will that was so break funny you. <laughs> yeah, I love that. but training break noel's heart will break you slow. something like that it's yes. funny yes Nightly exercises? You know, just basic strength and endurance training. A hundred push-ups, a hundred sit-ups, a hundred squats. No way! This is so funny. So there's this show I'm a, I'm a part of. Um, it's called One Punch Man. And this guy oh. is very... He ends up becoming very overpowered by doing a hundred push-ups, a hundred sit-ups, a hundred squats, and then a ten-kilometer run. And he does that every single day. And in the summer, he has his air conditioning off because he thinks it'll make him stronger, and then he becomes, like, uh, the equivalent of Superman, I guess. Uh, this is so funny she's saying this right and now. I'm running two laps around Mondstadt <laughs> as a morning routine. I'm actually incredibly busy every day. It's just that I always feel like something's missing. Oh, by the way, for everybody in the chat, I play uh, Genos in One Punch Man. Not, not the, not Saitama. <laughs> Genos. Wait. One Punch Man is that a live action show or is it a game? Oh yeah, so it's like um, it's it's an anime actually. Oh cool. <laughs> yeah, it's That's awesome. It's pretty neat. Um, it's it's neat because uh, that that same anime got me out to uh, got me out to New York New York City Comic Con, and so I went out there to promote that with uh with some of my some of my uh, castmates. And on the flight back, we actually met Stan Lee. You know who Stan Lee? Stan Lee was um, really, yeah. yeah. So, so we met Stan Lee, uh, one of 
one of my castmates actually worked with him on a Marvel set because um, he did stunt work and he did a bunch of a uh, bunch of other stuff for uh, for Civil War. So um, so he introduced me to Stan Lee and it was very surreal. I did. I wish I asked for a picture, but also I didn't want to be weird as you know, it's like he just took pictures all weekend with fans and whatnot. Right. So I got to meet him on the on the flight back. It was very cool. And then I think there was like some other Disney kids that, that got invited out there too. And and he knew all of them as well. Um, I don't know, small world, small world. Very, very it is, nice. It is amazing at some point when you start, yeah, when you start meeting people and you're like, I can't believe I just met that, you know, the, 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 these people that you knew who they were and watched all their work or yeah. read their work or whatever. Like I've, I've worked with a lot of playwrights um, through this new play festival I used to do um, in Portland. And there were times where you're like, I remember reading about this person, like when I was in theater school and now I'm sitting here talking to them and it was a very surreal experience. Yeah, I know it's, it was so crazy. I remember shaking his hand. I'm like, I will never wash this hand ever again. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, it was very cool. I couldn't I couldn't stop thinking about it. I remember I told my it's a it's a fun story. I love telling it every single time we went into the airport and Stan's bodyguard was there. It's like, whoa, back up, back up, back up. And my friend's like, no, 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 no. I know. I know him. I know him. Um, and then uh, and then Stan gets up from his chair and he and he kind of squints his eyes a little bit. And he looks over at my friend and then he says, I know that guy. Bring, bring him over here. And and so then we all got to go over and go over and meet him and chat with him even if it was just for a few minutes it very 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 surreal what a great story yeah it was very it's so cool uh just another thing right being a part of the entertainment industry something another yeah. cool thing because i feel like we put ourselves in these positions and stuff and it was totally a right time right place kind of thing he just so happened to be on the exact same flight that we were on going back to la so um so yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm trying to figure out what I should pick here. Like, what you lack is yeah. rest, what you lack is strength. Which one isn't? Yeah, but you, offensive. You can either work harder or work less. Yeah. Like you need to work I mean, harder, but you need to build your strength, or you need to chill. Noelle's kind of intense. You know what I mean? Like she's <laughs> she's studying all the time for that, and always feels like she should be doing more and working harder. So. Maybe, maybe pick rest. Yeah, I think I think you're right. Rest. That's nicer but... to yourself. Rest. <sighs> no, I've see, I just so can't even fathom that. Besides, I'm still not skilled enough. Any free time that I get should be spent training. If I want to become a real knight soon, I have to continue to put in more effort than the others. But time is precious. If I rest. <sighs> I'll feel guilty. This is... <laughs> I'm relating so much to this right now. <laughs> Especially when it comes to things, you get auditions. I'm like, do I want to do this? Yes. Yes, I have to. I must. Do, do I really I think I'm good for this? Yes, I, I, I'll make myself good for it. Or I'll do something that's so different that they'll have to love it. Uh, <laughs> How often do you send, like, two takes on things? You know, where you do one kind of according to the specs they send you, and then one that's just kind of random? Yeah, um, I think I send, it really depends. If I think I'm very good for the role and I have a whole other way that I should do it, whether it's in a different voice or, um, I don't, I don't know, whether it's in a different voice or there's a bunch of different readings that I want to take on it, then I will send it. But I guess not too often, o only if I really think that I'm good for it or if it's, or if it's like a weird weird role or like a wacky character then i send two takes if i'm if i'm unsure myself what they're kind of looking for if that makes sense because because that's something i always wonder about like you know do they know it when they hear it you know how i can't ever because sometimes have you ever seen the specs on something and you audition according to the, the specs and then you you don't get it and then you hear the ad or whatever and it is so different than what they talked about wanting or, or they make, you know, a big point, like this comes up all the time for a commercial job where they'll be like, we don't want anything slick, polished or announcery. And then you do your audition and then you hear it on the radio and you're like, that could not sound more slick, polished and announcery. Oh, like, it sounds like exactly what they I said really they didn't want. 100%. 100%. I hear, I, I see like that, that so much. 
resting. And I wonder if it's just because, training. like, whoever auditioned for it didn't do it that way. But as soon as they got in the room with the writer and the client and everything, they got directed into that direction. You know, like the, the the audition that got them the job might have not sounded that way. But then all of a sudden, someone was like, "It sounds too casual." You know, it doesn't sound like they're really punching the product enough. I always wonder about that. Definitely. So that's um, why Miss Lisa you know, always has afternoon tea in the library. I see that. I get it now. Oh, she's talking about Lisa's afternoon tea in the library. Yeah, I you know, I'm I'm not really sure. Sometimes I I don't know, I've kind of accepted the fact that a lot of those a lot of those guys are um <laughs> I hate to say it, but they're a little crazy, a little cuckoo. Uh the advertising agency people, they never truly know what they want, even when I've been hired and I'm in the room and I'm doing uh I've done like car commercials and other things like that, just just strictly voiceover and they'll and I'll get cast off of one thing, I'll go in, I'll know exactly what I'm gonna do for it because that's what they supposedly loved. And then they change it completely. Uh, they want me to tap certain words. They want it to sound super announcerish. They don't want it yeah. to sound like a like a, a normal person. But then again, sometimes they sometimes that's what they think sounds like a normal person is some like somebody well, talking like this. I'm like that is not a normal person. Uh, <laughs> or it seems like too the more people that you have involved in a session, the, the more fingerprints that need to get left on it. Like you could do it really according to what they said they wanted and you can give them a really great take and then sometimes someone just feels like well if we just let them you know do two takes and leave like we really should work this more i've seen that happen where they just i feel like they just want to feel like they directed you know as opposed to it needing it and then i've worked with people who are great who are like well that's it fantastic done um that's what we asked for that's what you gave us yeah. we're done and then other times you're working with people where you'll have like one person in there who's like, I don't, can we hear it again? And could this time, could you like really hit the word water? Because and, you know, whatever reason that is. And you think, oh my gosh, we, we could be done, but now we won't be <laughs> because this person wants to leave their fingerprints on it. Total, oh, totally, totally. What do you think about, speaking of water, <laughs> what do you think about tea right now? She's asking about uh about Ooh. how lisa always has afternoon tea in the library i get it now and speaking of tea let's have some is this too forward is this like yeah let's have let's go get some tea or um, i think we could go get some tea i mean basically the, the other one is you just agreeing with her that lisa likes to rest that's that's true that's Definitely, true i think it feels more actionable let's oh, oh okay <laughs> I, I wish you could hear this i love the way you read this line that's awesome <laughs> Sweet. Oh, are there any particular snacks you like? I can get started with... Oh, no need? I should take a break? Oh, oh. okay then. In that case, Wait. let's head to Good Hunter and have a look. I'm like, why am I... Why am I hearing her? Oh, was she, she was still standing there. Because oh. <laughs> <laughs> I kept hearing her in my, uh, in my head. <laughs> I was hearing, I could, I could hear it very, very faintly. B? What happened? Is there something I can help you with? Oh, wait, so maybe the volume does work. On the little stream thing, is there is there a volume tab for you? Possibly? There's a lounge, uh, let me see. In the, in that like big window, I guess, where you, where you see like, uh, where you see my screen, is there a little, uh, I don't know, a little speaker looking button? If not, that's totally fine, <laughs> but. There's a mute. Oh, wait. Yeah, let me try and raise that up a little. Is she talking? Let me see if you can hear this. Quinn, he's ignoring me again. Yeah, now I can hear it. Oh, awesome. Okay, sweet. It's faint, but I can hear it. Well, take your time. No rush. I'm here to help. I. You know what I love in this scene? That dude mood. in the fountain back there just so hanging out. I to call him over for a chat. <laughs> Did you yeah. notice him? Yeah. Oh, a d Good. date? <laughs> He's like pulling focus. Yeah. In an acting class, we would make up some, uh, probably some improv of this guy, you know. <laughs> what right, is he well, doing? Look, look, he's actually doing a lot. Like he's not, <laughs> look, so he's scooping up. <laughs> yeah. Coins oh, like, is that, oh, this is what he is. He's, so he's looking around. He looks left, right. He's like, huh. Yeah, I, I'm, yeah, I don't well, think he's, anybody. Crystal is the, the brother of a character. There's another character that he's the brother of, and he actually like that collects the money from the fountain for her because she's sick or something oh, like that. Oh, okay. Oh, so he's a he's a good guy. He's not. So it's. He looks super shady, problem? but 
he's, he's doing oh, it he for a good cause. Shady. Like he's just lurking back there, but he's super obvious. Yes. Like he's not remotely been subtle. Several times today already. But no matter how hard I try to make conversation, he just focuses on a stall and ignores me completely. Noel, everyone in Mondstadt thinks you're really cute. You must be really popular, right? Can you help me out? Ah, uh, of of course. It's a maid's responsibility to help the residents of Mondstadt. It's just, I... I don't have any experience in this area. Even Noel can't help me. Oh, please, don't worry, I... Oh, we also have the honorary knight here. Honorary there knight, you go. can you help me? Honorary knight, oh yeah, um... <laughs> I'm just looking at this guy waiting for him to scoop up some more money. Um, <laughs> or whatever it is he's hitting. He's like, it's once you, once you notice the him, floor. you can't unsee him. I guess I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll help. Oh, thank you. Let's analyze the okay. situation first. B said that Quinn always seems busy and ignores everything she says. But... I know that she's often looking for small talk with Quinn. Hmm. I am so... I don't... <laughs> I have no idea which one to pick. Um, feels like has nothing important to say to him. Maybe the frequent small talk. Like they're talk. mostly saying... They're kind of saying the same thing. Yeah. Like, I don't think you can pick it wrong. That's... That's what you think, unless... That's a possibility. In other words, we just need to make Quinn realize that this time is different. For example, by sending him a little gift. Even Quinn would notice the difference a gift would bring. But what kind of gift? Hmm. What kind of gift? Gift sh gifts convey our intentions we should choose carefully. It shouldn't matter. It's the thought that counts. Yeah, that's... Huh. <laughs> uh, it's so funny, because I agree with both of these. Um, <laughs> what do you think, Laura? I, I lean more towards gift convey our intentions we should choose carefully, only because um, she's trying to impress someone. That's true. That's true. I think it's more of like, if it's a family member mm -hmm. or... It's it's all about yeah, the context, the right? They, it's all, like, they already love you. You know, if you know someone and they already like you, then it's the thought. But if it's someone you don't know, I mean, like, have you ever gotten a really weird gift from someone and you're like, what are you trying to say with this? Let me think. Um, oh, yeah, okay. Uh, That's what I, <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> well, actually, no. I've I've never people people are so nice and cool. I don't know if you've ever done any of the conventions, Laura. Everybody but has their preferences, um, so it's important. To I would go to right conventions and people would give me them. uh people would give me like a a chocolate candy. Like, I don't really know how to explain it. Just like a chocolate wrapped apple, and uh, and it looks like yeah. an apple from the from the wrapping paper on the outside of it. And that was because of my, my character in Fire Emblem. He's the professor. So every, people okay. thought it was funny to give me the give me the chocolate apples. <laughs> if it were me, nice. I was like, that's so cute. Yeah. No, I haven't done the conventions. I would. I just haven't done one before. I mean, I think because you've done more games than I have. Like, how many different games are you involved in? Uh, I guess, yeah, I guess a good amount. Good amount of games. Good amount of... Um, good amount of anime but i don't know i think you you could totally i'm I sure they I'm, I'm sure they have one specifically just for mario yeah so that would they be probably cool. do you know i i told, i met this ex actress on a short film i was doing and she had been in like a horror movie like a really popular God, i can't even talk popular popular horror movie franchise and um she was talking about that they're actually pretty easy to get involved in, and I kind of meant to ask her about it, and then COVID hit. <laughs> so I was like, well, oh, gotcha. don't think we're going to any conventions anytime soon. Yeah, that's pretty much what happened. Uh, hopefully, once everything gets cleared up and um, and everything's safe again, I've been saying to my stream and been telling people that I'm really looking forward to 
just getting back out there and meeting people. It looks uh, so fun. Like it's something I would absolutely 100% do. Yes. Um, it looks, I mean, just, you know, a great way to connect with people who like the games and um, yeah. It's, it's super fun. And I'm confused about what Noelle is saying here. I bet you like handmade things, but let's think about what Quinn might like. Yeah, roses and handmade things both sound nice. Like that sounds nice. That sounds nice to me, but I don't know why this is so this is so tricky. I'm losing well, my mind. Well, because it's not like obvious which way it's gonna go if you pick that. You know what I mean? I like, feel like I'm gonna offend her if I say like, yeah, but but let's not do a handmade thing. Like, you might like making handmade things, but uh, <laughs> it's like he's implying your handmade things kind of suck, or he could. <laughs> <laughs> it imply that I don't right, know. Right. Um. Okay, I'm gonna go with number two. Let's see what happens. Oh yes, I, I just wanted to try thinking from a different perspective. Hmm. Quinn, what kind of gift would he like? If I remember correctly, isn't Quinn one of the four drunkards of Mondstadt? <laughs> Perhaps something wine-related would do. But what? Hmm. Something wine related. Something thinking about it isn't really helping. Let's go to Marjorie's store and see what's available. Let's go ask Venti. He's a drunkard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome to With Wind Comes Glory. Well, if it isn't Noel and the honorary knight, and what wind brought the two of you together? I barely ever see Noel in someone else's company. Well, when Noelle's working, she practically always takes care of things by herself. And once she's finished with A, it's straight off to take care of B. Seems she hardly has time to catch her breath. Say, Noelle, you're not a child anymore, you know? If you don't take time for oh, yourself, you may come to regret <laughs> it in the future. I am um, being very condescending to today. But something came up. Oh? So it's a day off Noelle's with been busy. the honorary night? Always yeah. busy. Oh, how wonderful. Marjorie's also now being That's a matchmaker. To celebrate. You must be here to pick out a gift for the honorary night. Choose anything you like. We have a lot that might tickle your fancy. Okay. Um, we're here to help someone else choose a gift, even without gifts. Today... Is still a day to be celebrated. That's so weird how it just turned to nighttime um, during a cutscene. I didn't know it. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I didn't know. It did, I didn't know it did that. Did it do that before? Um. Oh, we're I here. Know. We're here. Somebody else, right? Is this one? Yeah, we're here for uh, what's your face and Quinn. Who's who's the woman we're B? Yeah. I would say it'd be even without gifts or that one you're on. Because you're not here to buy a gift for me. Yeah, we're here to help someone else choose a you Unless you're saying that to just tease Noelle. Oh, well, I mean, I guess it'd be interesting to see what, what she says if we pick this one. I guess I'll go for it. I'll go and... let's see. Oh, well, it doesn't matter who's sending what to who. You can't get without giving. <laughs> Stop teasing! <laughs> Me and the honorary knight <laughs> don't have that kind of relationship. <laughs> Not yet. Oh, Marjorie. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's a way to make things awkward, Marjorie. I know. I know. I have friends who do this, too, like in real life. I'm like, you are so... Mm. Uh, I <laughs> and guess. they love it. After all, Noelle here is the type that needs a push every now and again. Looks like she's still in the dark when it comes to these things. And more judgment. I, I just feel I shouldn't let such things distract me from my chivalric training. It's all about training and duty and, and nothing else. <laughs> yes. Laser focus. There are too many important <laughs> things to take care of. Okay, okay. No more teasing. So, what is the reason for this visit? So, you're choosing a gift for B to give to Quinn. In that case, I have a couple of fun new things in stock. A frosting bottle and a squirrel wood carving. The frosting bottle is very useful to keep alcohol cold and fresh for a long time. As for the squirrel wood carving, well, it's a nice ornament and it would look great at Quinn's stall. So, 
bottle or ornament? Which will it be? Wow, okay, interesting. A squirrel wood carving? Who wants a squirrel wood carving? <laughs> <laughs> and he's a drunk, that's, I think it's obvious. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> A, a wood carving of a hmm, I don't know. Maybe the <laughs> go it's for it so, if you want. <laughs> no, there's no way. I'm, I gotta go for the bottle. That is so funny though. The frosting. Maybe bottle. they want to see if people are paying attention, and that's why they the put so. that off, option in. They remembered what I said. Oh. So frosting bottle it is. Alrighty, let me wrap it up for you. Okay, yeah. now that the gift is wrapped, uh, let's hurry back and give it to B. Ooh. Yeah, Chang Yoon would have liked the, the squirrel carving, for sure. <laughs> hmm? Give the frosting bottle to Quinn? Also, thanks for the help, guys, in the chat. I got a lot of people saying, pick one, pick two, pick three. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah, you should ask them and not me. I'm kind of trying to, to have my... Uh, well, if I ask people... This always, I swear, it always happens. I, if I do ask people, I get a crazy amount of responses and I can't tell. Oh, I don't know. I've never seen it. a consecutive. People's brains are like, yeah, this is the correct option. And then people mess, try to mess with me and say, oh, this is this is the wrong option. <laughs> Let's do this because it'll be funny. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> it's always hard to tell. Right. <laughs> it does look like something that he'd be interested in. Wait, wait. Maybe I can use the gift as bait. I could say that if he wants to get the gift, then he'll have to come on a date with me first. Thank you both so much. With this okay, gift, B. there's no way Kun will be able to refuse me. Uh huh. Is that how gifts work? That is how gifts work. If I, if I, yeah, <laughs> that, if I am correct, if you, um,. It's like if you buy your agent an expensive bottle of wine, then you're, especially like on New Year's or before New Year's, and you go drop off some gifts, you're you're more than likely to uh, to succeed in the well, next year. As long as it helps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Past year probably changed a lot of that for people, though. It did. What's wrong? Yeah, it was tricky. I was I was sending out things to. Uh, to people and some things didn't arrive and some things people didn't get and I had to check I was like are you in the office or oh you're not right. oh okay is the office even there anymore oh it's 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 not okay yeah well uh, I mean that's gonna be super interesting how much of how many people stay working remote this next year yeah yeah I, I mean, mean we curious. always have for the most part so that's not that different but like in terms of our daily work of auditioning, I mean, I do much prefer to go into studio than try and record from home. Right, right. I've been on a, I've been on kind of like um, almost the opposite end of that actually, because, I, well, I, I invested a lot of money into having like a whole uh, home setup. I mean, I have everything. You know, I got the booth, I have the microphone, the equipment. Um, so technically, I can kind of match people's audio, um, but at the same time, I do miss that human interaction and this weird mm -hmm. that weird little butterflies oh, sure. like the butterflies yeah. I get when I go in just wanting to I don't know I don't know how to explain it but sometimes when I'm nervous I feel like I I do better uh I, yeah oh I, I think that's totally true I mean it can work in your favor nervous energy can be really positive especially when you're auditioning for things because you just you're just a little more amped up than you are when you're super relaxed and, and then again depending on what it is that sometimes that really just totally relaxed thing works too. It's it's so much dependent on the, what you're what you're auditioning for, I think. Yeah. And what kind of energy you want to bring to it. Totally. I just. But I think a lot of camera stuff is going to stay remote because for people who don't want to like rent studio space, you know, audition space, and that they can do everything through Zoom like we've been doing, I think that's going to stick around. Definitely, definitely. It's so and this is so random, Laura. But I just noticed that guy in the background. He's gone now from this from he this got shot. All the money. Oh, he, he, like, I, I was thinking. It out. I was thinking he fell in, and um, <laughs> uh, this is a whole other storyline. I hope he can breathe underwater down there. Oh no, no, it's yeah. not the gift. I've been guy. so focused on convincing Quinn, I hadn't even thought about where our date's gonna be. 
I've never gotten to that stage. Where? Noelle, could you help me? <sighs> a date should be properly planned, so I'll wait. No I, need to rush. I, I knew this was like a date sort of thing, but this is so interesting. He's... We're helping her plan for her date. Just, <laughs> yeah. I'm being Listen very needy. But maybe that just kind of goes to show the kind of character Noelle is, just always we helping people. Place with pleasant scenery for sure, yeah, that's atmosphere. very much her brand. And so that's why they threw that in there. They're like, yeah, you want to get to know uh, Noelle better? You're going to be helping people too. If we see anywhere good, let's take a picture. <laughs> I feel like have the final say. technically is my character because oh, he goes around and does a bunch of tasks. About Cape I, I would Maybe say that, that he's sort of spot. similar in a way um, in terms of helping people. Just probably not as uh, efficient and <laughs> able to get the job done as fast as Noelle. Yeah. <laughs> and you're high, he's a higher status too than Noelle. We're way behind schedule. Oh yeah, I guess so, technically. Uh, how do I? Oh, you can see Falcon Coast from here. Such a beautiful view. Wait, is Let's this find the a good angle and take a picture? I'm so confused. Is this the date spot? It's raining and. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're kind of just scoping out locations to give to B to like say, well, here's a place you could have a date, and here's a place you could have a date. Oh, I see. Well, let's take a picture. Um, <laughs> that's so funny. Take a picture of this dreary, rainy day. Nothing says romance like pouring rain. Does that work if I just do that? Oh, yeah, it does. Okay. Let's head cool. to Star Snatch Cliff next. Star Snatch Cliff, another beautiful location. How do I get up and there? So elevated. This place is super famous mm. for its night sky. I am the wrong person to ask. I I'm guess, still so new. <laughs> I guess climb. I think you'll find that too in this game. There's a lot of exploring and adventuring and and climbing. Lots of climbing. Oh. Just Keep when I first started, I mean, the, the first day I played, like, I just spent all this time running through the grass and along the coast. I couldn't figure out where I was even supposed to go. It was pathetic. And then I started, and I was like, oh, I guess I could follow Paimon, and, you know, that helped. But it, it I, I didn't even know what I was supposed to be doing. <laughs> I was just running around. I know, it gets tricky, especially in these open world games when there's just so many things around you. And as you explore you'll find that there's just a million different things to do. And it can definitely be a little bit overwhelming at first. Like, I didn't know I was supposed to pick things up at first. You know, I'd pass things and I'd think, oh, is that poisonous? Should I not touch that? You know, or if I touch that, is it going to oh, immediately kill me? Like, when I would right. see, would they be like a mushrooms over here or there'd be something to collect? I wasn't sure at first because it doesn't really, like... I'm sure there's an instruction thing somewhere. I just haven't seen it. I've just been experimenting when I play. Totally, totally. Yeah, and you don't know yet. You don't know what the game mechanics are or what what it's going to throw at you. But in this game, it's sort of like, yeah, pick up anything and everything. Because <laughs> you're going to need it at, at some point. Yeah, right, like that right there. When I was running through that, I was kind of <laughs> yeah. cringing at first. When I was first playing it, going, what is that? Is that, is that the thing that kills you? Do you lose life force every time you run past it? <laughs> Just don't walk into uh, walk into the fire. Let's get a picture um, from the top. Our director. That's one thing not to do. Uh, our director Chris, he he uh, he uses this character called Klee, and she throws down little bombs. Uh, long story short, is we played together for the first time, and he tried to. He he was such a higher level than I was, like so much higher level than I was. So he does a lot more damage, um, and he tried to he tried to kill me. The first, the first time, it was great. He <laughs> he just threw fire all over me. I had to go use the restroom, and I left my game on, and he threw flames on the ground, and thought it was hilarious as uh, as my health bar just magically so melted funny. away. Oh, Chris. he's hilarious. Oh, I know he's yeah. great. <laughs> so that's another cool thing about this game. Did I not change it to the right? Time? Oh, I think I did. Uh, that you can change the time in this game. So if you want it to be nighttime or 
uh, dusk. You can do all that. Right. Okay. Is that a good enough picture? I think yeah. So. <laughs> now, one more option. When you play this, do you usually play as your character, or do you switch it up a lot? Let's go to Windrise. You know, um, <laughs> I recently tried to go and kill all the bosses as just my character, and uh, and it. Look it, over there. The I, I made a YouTube video out of it. Um, I I haven't posted it yet, but uh, I think people will people will definitely find that funny. Um, needless to say, it did not go well. It was not. I, I died a lot, um, <laughs> so yeah. I've been playing as I've been playing as a lot of the other a lot of other characters. My my current team setup or my party right now is uh, is is all these these different characters you can see on the right hand side of the screen. Oh, okay. And they all do different things. Uh, like this guy's rock, uh, this girl's ice, this girl's fire, and then uh, my character. Uh, right now, I have him set as uh, wind, which is called animo. Okay. So he does the the wind blade. Sometimes he'll sometimes he'll say it. Yeah, make him say it. Okay, let's see if he'll come on. Wind blade, give me a wind blade. Okay, he's not. Come on, hey, come on, buddy, speak. <laughs> come on, speak. Just please, <laughs> just this one, please. Uh, I know you don't talk that much, but please, come on, come on. <laughs> Come on. I'm gonna keep doing it until he says Windblade. Come on, you got it, right here, okay. Okay, you got the grunts, now Windblade. Uh, okay, you, you got the Windblade. Windblade, that's it. Windblade. <laughs> Give us a Windblade. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe he's a little, uh, he's a little bit, a little bit shy. I okay. know. Come on. Okay, just just voice dub it in for us. I know. I'm gonna have to. Okay, I guess I'll have to do it. Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> Windblade. Okay, there we go. Oh, that was so good. <laughs> that was perfect. Yeah, it came directly from the game. I did not do that. As you can see, my character he talks a lot. He uh he speaks. It, trust me. Um. Just. Do you prefer when you're doing a character? Do you prefer doing lines or efforts? Uh, <laughs> at this point, I think lines. <laughs> right, you've just done enough of the efforts. You're like, all right, full day of that. It can it can get tiring though. I will that say, um, let's get back to B. There there have been a lot of games that I've recorded where my characters just nonstop are talking about a bunch of stuff, and the, the team tries to fill me in about exactly what is happening. But it doesn't always register with my brain, you know, because we got that tight, tight schedule, and I'm like, what is this? What is this? Uh, therm like I'm talking about maybe technology or different things within a game, the thermostat of the electronic, uh, something, something, and it doesn't make it. I'm like, what is this? And if they were to explain all of that to me, then it would probably take a long time. <laughs> so they don't. Yeah. And they're just like, yeah, you know, it's just like this cool device. Just, it's cool. You like this thing. Like, okay. There's an audio drama that I do. Um, and, you know, I've watched some science fiction type stuff or fantasy stuff, but I'm, I'm not super well versed in those worlds, you know, especially like spaceship type things. And so whenever I get those scripts, I have to say, is this a positive thing? Ooh, are you going to talk to him? Yeah, yeah what, is, what is this guy doing? What are you doing? You frightened me. What, what are, are you, you do doing? Yeah, right? Well, you've caught me yeah, already. We, caught you. we totally caught you. Oh, I feel like I have talked to this guy before. And then, like you said, yeah, people treat it like a wishing well. They throw away their money. In desperate need. And then this is where it gets sad. I thought this was this guy was just some punk. And then he's like, because of my sister. She's suffering from a rare disease. Just take my money. Here, I have the I have the mora. In this game, that's what the money's called. It's called uh, mora. So I'm like, take my mora. But I also work hard at my job. 
if the Archons all are watching, I'm sure they'll forgive my oh, okay. actions. Please, give, take my money, sir. Did you give him money? I, I wish I could. I, Anna, I would. I oh. will make you better. Can you wind blade him? <laughs> oh, he does. He does talk. Oh, he sounded so sad. Okay, let me see if I. I'll. I'll throw a little wind blade his way. Come on. Okay. Well, he didn't say it, Yay! but he threw a wind blade. Oh wait, maybe. Let me see. Can. Maybe you can hear this. With the wind. Oh. Okay. Cool. There it that is. Was it. Yeah. Yeah. Heard you. He said with the wind. Oh, done. Okay, one more, one more. Come on, say Windblade, Windblade. Okay, he doesn't want to say it right now for some reason. Oh, you guys are back. What romantic locations did you find? Uh, what? Oh wait. Uh oh. You're not paying attention to. I was like, I was like, <laughs> what was the what was the location with the rain? Uh, that one was uh, not a good one. I don't remember. That was oh, was that Star Snatcher? Or was that? Listen, B is being super needy and not planning her own date, so she can take what she gets. <laughs> just give her one, and if it's the rain yeah. one, then she can just deal. Yeah, she can bring an umbrella. That's... Who knows? Maybe this guy likes rain. She's putting no effort into this date. If we have to do all the work, then she just can oh, wait, take wind, it. Oh, wait. Windrise. Was Windrise the one? I don't remember which one. I don't remember. Uh, okay. I'm just gonna... Ah, uh, there's too many things. I'm not gonna look at the chat, everybody. Stop! I can't. There's so many options. I say Windrise, Cape Oath, Windrise. Which... I'm gonna choose the one that I haven't seen, and that's Star Snatch. Wait, aren't there people here already? I don't want other people ruining the atmosphere while we're on the date. Let's look at another place. How... how about Windrise? <laughs> I choose the one that, like, people aren't saying <laughs> well, the Oh May what? Love be as free as a Anthony's line. back too. Oh yeah, there he is. He's, he's still he's still down there. He has the same motion. He goes, Can we make this guy a playable character? That'd be great. Windrise? I know. I wish they would. Hmm. That's a great location. But isn't it a bit cliche? Huh? Cl cliche? Wait, so they make us they make us go to well, Windrise, I think, anyways. Well, are always what? going on about something symbolic about that place. Besides, we've been there so many times when we were young. It just feels like there's nothing special or new about it. Oh. See, this is why B can't get a date. Okay. She's difficult. Hmm. I'm going <laughs> with difficult. Kate both. Thanks so much. What? I'm off to find Quinn. Hold on a sec. <sighs> Quinn, <laughs> I wonder what kind of oath he'll make to me. Uh, is Windrise? This girl frustrates no me. That was probably the rainy one. Yeah. <laughs> the book said that it was the most popular place in Mondstadt. Uh, I'm not what, sure. What was that book written? I found it while cleaning a corner of the library. It was the story of Windrise and Lady Vanessa. I thought folks in Mondstadt would still like to go there. Whoa, this is forward. Would you like to go there with me? Don't worry about it. I like it. Yeah, this is the one we gotta choose. Uh, you wanna go to Windrise? Think of it as our last break of the day. Oh, okay. Follow me. She's so cute. I love Noelle's design. It's so cool. I do too. I remember I, I saw costume. that. And I thought she... I remember I saw her. I was like, whoa, like, do you play as this character? This is so awesome. I hear if you build her right that she's an incredible tank character that she's really yeah. can do a lot but you have to build it right yeah I've heard that too um I I need to make a, I so in the game you can have a bunch of different teams technically so even though I have four characters right now on my thing you can have uh multiple multiple teams of four characters if that makes sense kind of like a team team a team b team c of, uh, of, of four different characters, and I definitely want to put her on on one of my teams, but uh, I'm I'm not there yet. Currently, I'm just trying to level up uh, level up my main party first because I'm running out of materials. <sighs> the air here really refreshes you in an instant. Forget about training <laughs> and work. Just breathe and feel the wind. Nothing else. 
<laughs> what is this line like? You know, you can come here whenever you whenever you want, right? Like, I think it's the same thing of like you could you could relax more often, you know, like you could take a break. Oh, Noelle. yeah, totally, totally. That's true. But training and work are still the things I need to focus on. If I didn't take them seriously, I wouldn't be a reliable maid. So this is the responsibility that you put on yourself? Isn't that tiring? Yeah. Yes, to some degree. But Lady Vanessa and Master Jean? Oh, they worked much harder than me. I know I have a lot to live up to. That's why I want to become a real Knight of Favonius. To help more people. Yeah. What do you think? Did she already possess it? I or... think so. I think so. Yeah, the I think the A. I think or the the first choice here is the best I think this is the, the best one. The kindest one. Helping others is the greatest quality of, of a knight. Like that's true. Yeah, let's go with this that one. Is, that, that is what Noel really? does is help others. So. Yeah. Thank you. If you weren't here today, I wouldn't have been able to help B. It's just a small token of appreciation, but I hope you'll accept it. Roses are my favorite flower. This is a paper one that I folded by hand. You're giving me a rose? Wait, do you do you know what roses I am. mean? Of course. In <laughs> Mondstadt, roses represent the saying, as wine bottles are corked, so too my lips are sealed. I have seen and learned a lot during our time together. It will become a wonderful memory. One that I will savor again and again. I want it to remain in my heart and become a secret between the two of us. Ah, <sighs> wait, do you mean that roses have some meaning that I don't know about? <laughs> uh, um, yeah, never mind. Oh. I'll need to go back to the library and find out. Still, whatever a rose means. I hope that this one can stay by your side in all your future adventures. Before I'm able to fight alongside you, honorary knight. Aw, oh, that was cute. Aww. Oh, wow. Oh, and then you get a little picture. It's like the sweetest little ending. Oh, that's so cute. The meaning of the rose only exists in our you know, I wish I'd had that one when we were posting about it. That would have been a good one to use. Yeah, that is a cool image. They're beneath the tree. Wow, so technically, so I guess we we got any, hey, everybody in the chat, was that a, is that the best ending? That's the best ending? Because, uh, so Laura, because I'm sure you know you can get different endings the way you you kind of do this thing. People are telling me this is the best ending. Is that true? Yes. I would have, well, having recorded all the endings, I, that was one of my favorites for sure. Oh, very cool. I, that was <laughs> I want to see what happened to that girl. I want to see what happened to, to B. B. Yeah, she's just oh, up there in the can, rain. <laughs> you, can, you can actually find out about, like, if you if you play again and go a different route, oh, you, you will find out more about Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Where am I? What am I doing? Where am I going? That was so cool. That was. That made me angry, though, that she sent us off. She's like, "Yeah, go take a bunch of pictures of places. Like, tell me where the best place to go for for the for the data is. And no matter where you choose, she's like, "Ah, yeah, I, I already know where I want to go." Exactly, oh. like we just wasted a ton of time. But what's so great about that ending is that we then like went and had time together, so it wasn't just like being bees, step and fetch it's for the day. Yeah. Holy, and also, guys, I just want to say I know I haven't really, uh, I haven't been able to shout out all of the members uh, that have recently joined, but um, really quick, I just want to say thank you so much to um, to. Ram Ram Kuki, uh, that Valley Girl, 
uh Brandon Caesar um uh Nguyen Tran uh who else so many people in here who have people oh wait somebody said uh Panthera says just tap E to make either say Windblade is it just tapping E is that it Hold on a sec. Could I have made him say Windblade this whole time? <laughs> You're I learning something new. I swear, I've I've held it down and he says Windblade. Does he just say okay? No, no, guys, it didn't work. Try it again. He's not saying. Is the person yeah. who said that still there? Can you ask her specifically? I. I think that they were. Yeah, I don't. Not hold. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not holding it, guys. I am not. I'm tapping it. Look at. I'm. I'm tapping. I tap. I tap. <laughs> Are you troll? I feel like everybody's trolling me. They're saying tap it, not hold it. I tapped it. I held it. I've done everything. He just won't say it. Just tap. Don't. Boom! I, I, I'm tapping it. I tapped it once, really quick. You guys are trolling me! Okay! No, stop! Stop! He does not... He, does, he just does not feel like saying it! I'm not doing this... Okay, this is... This is it, I know. So, Genshin Impact is sort of like, uh... You know, you... You spend your gems to try to get a character in a way. It's... It's huh? almost like gambling, sort of. <laughs> I is is that like, the, the, the gotcha? Is that what yeah, it's called? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So th I feel like that's what I'm doing here is just gambling for... Okay, <laughs> he's gonna say it now on the next next Windblade. No, okay. Um, just an effort. Why won't he say it? This is the weirdest thing. I've never... Do I have to hit an enemy maybe? No? Okay, one more time, one more time. Hold, hold it down. Maybe if I hold it down all the way. Oh! There you go. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Did it. Thank you. That was satisfying. All right. He, did I just not hold it long enough before? Okay. Nope. That wasn't it. All right. So it has to be with an enemy. I and hold it oh, down. Oh, maybe. I guess I've never noticed that before. Unless it's okay. Let me try it. Yeah. Oh no. Okay, it's just random. I guess like once in a blue moon, uh, <laughs> they're just sticking by. <laughs> they're like, yeah, this guy just doesn't talk that much, and we're gonna stick to that. Um, <laughs> I don't, I don't know why he doesn't say it. I swear, when I'm playing by myself, he says it a lot. But if it's just I me, what's the difference? I think it's just the. I don't know. Somebody, somebody's trolling me. Somebody over at. Somebody over at the company is like, yeah, we'll just, uh, we'll flip a little switch and, uh, make it so Zack's character doesn't say his signature line. It's fine. Everything's fine. It's okay. I see how it Noelle's is. is steady as stone, right? Noelle's steady as stone. Oh, is that what she says? Yeah, I think she, you, ask the room, but I think it's steady as stone. Right, right, because she's Geo. Yes, That's really is. cool. What do you remember about the recording process of, uh, I don't know. I know it's weird. It's weird asking you this because a lot of people ask me this and I am always like, well, uh, it's only been well, like it's, years. It's, and one of, the, it's the, one of the first things I did, um, during COVID actually. <sighs> really? Yeah. When I recorded her, it was one that was the one of the first things I had done since everything had locked down. Oh. Um, so you said you did yours years ago? Yeah, so when I, I think I did mine, um, not putting a specific month on it, but I think in 2019 is when the, when, when I started working oh. on this game. I was say, that's not that far apart. Like they, you know, cause they just probably spread it out cause there's so many characters. I did mine yeah. kind of early in 2020. So oh, that gotcha. makes sense. Um, but I, one of the things I remember the most about it was because, you know, 
because we were all remote. So I was in a studio in Burbank and Chris was from home. And then um, we had Mihoyo people who were in China. And I just I, remember that they were you know, working through the night. Like I just, you forget about that time change because they were like talking about what they were going to have for breakfast because they had been working all night, but it was the middle of the afternoon here. Yeah. Yeah, I remember um, one of the people uh, on the uh, one of the people on the line for that session um, was almost falling asleep because it was so, and I felt so bad for them. Yeah. Uh, was almost falling asleep because it was so late, or, or it was like late, or like three or four a.m. in China, um, yep. and and these people. I'm trying to keep it very. Uh, I don't know, very anonymous because we're, we're we're not supposed to say their names or anything technically. So, um, so I don't want to like expose them because um, they're like super, super secret. Uh, <laughs> this is so weird to say. Um, but yeah, you guys, you guys watch and you understand. Uh, so, yeah, I felt really bad. I was like, oh, just go to bed. And I think at one point <laughs> our director, Chris, was like, yeah, yeah, just go to bed. We, we got this. We, for especially for my session because it was just like a bunch of grunts <laughs> right. yeah we got yeah. this you know like, like zach's done this before zach knows zach knows the grunts he, he he's got this just just don't worry about it just go to sleep <laughs> yeah no they work really hard like i have to say and that schedule is crazy yeah i've worked graveyard shifts before and it's surreal like you you get into it you know you adjust to it at some point but it's like living like a vampire totally Oh, and somebody somebody said that what is that saying somebody said somebody said uh stormakai says ether i found you in my book you were a vampire what do you mean i was a vampire what i don't i don't know but well thank you for your super chat <laughs> They're on to me. Oh, is this something in the chat? <clears throat> uh, no, yeah. they know all about you. They're on to they're on to me and my uh, my baby face because uh, it's funny <laughs> because when I reach out to people, I'm sure everyone's like, "Who the heck is this kid?" Um, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, you, you do look. I mean, I don't know how old you are, but you didn't. You definitely look young for your age because I was like, that I had that moment. I was like, "Oh, he's in the game," um, but. <laughs> But that's a great thing as an actor because you can play young. Yeah, it's it's so it's so wonderful. Um, it's so wonderful walking into a bar or you go to go to, go into a liquor store and they just give you that look like <laughs> you're trying to pull a fast one on me, Sonny. No, you ain't. <laughs> and I'm like, guys, right. I <laughs> one of these people like until you really like have wrinkles or gray hair or something that people are always just going to kind of question. Yeah, I went into, um, it's so funny because, uh, I don't know, I don't really, uh, even when I am, like, with my friends and hanging out, I don't really drink, like, a whole lot, but, but in the before times, before COVID, there was, um, like, an arcade kind of bar, and so I went there just to hang out with my friends and, uh, and play in the arcade in the back, you know, we're just, like, we're a bunch of nerds, we're just talking about, like, I don't know, our favorite games and shows and, uh, we're just kind of hanging out and having a good time and so uh, the bar was in the very front of the front of the establishment and i just walked right past it and i went to the arcade arcade portion of it and the okay. manager okay. comes out like and type thing? uh yeah yeah in a way in a way kind of um but the manager like comes out screaming at me saying like hey i need to see your id <laughs> like so so loud it scared <laughs> it scared the crap out of me like i've never physically jumped but i was like <sighs> like it scared me so bad um and then i was like yeah uh here's my id i'm i i didn't even like you can't i don't i don't really understand what the rule is but i guess like in order to even be in the building you had to be over 21 so um even even yeah. if you're not ordering a drink oh, i remember yeah, that is the rule. I mean, this was in Oregon, I'm thinking of. But when I was in college, I remember going on. So there was a play I was doing and we did like kind of a beach retreat weekend or something. And so, you know, we were driving out there, driving out there. And then we stopped for dinner and it was a lot of small towns. This was in kind of like a rural, a coastal area. So it was late. Everybody was really hungry, but we couldn't find like a restaurant restaurant. So there was this bar that they were having a trivia night. And so I was the problem. Everybody else was over 21. 
And so they said to me, they're like, well, you know, how would you, would you feel comfortable? Like, you know, saying you were over 21, like my friends are asking me this. And I was like, oh yeah, sure. But I'm a bad liar. I'm just not a good liar. I'm very uncomfortable with it. And it's really obvious when I am, I'm just better off being honest most of the time because I'm always going to get caught. So they were like literally in the car quizzing me going, how old are you? And I'm like 21. And they're like, how old are you? 21. And they're like, where's your ID? I forgot it. You know, whatever. They were kind of like rehearsing me. And we get in there and we sit down and I'm not going to drink. Like I didn't drink when I was 19. So I was like, you know, all right, I'm ordered a Coke or something, but the waitress just took and look at me and she goes, how old are you? And I went 19. Like, I I mean, I cracked like the second she asked me, I couldn't lie to her. No. And then we all had to leave because of me. Oh no. Yeah. I guess it's good that I'm honest, but it was certainly not good for my friends who were like, we're hungry. It'd be nice if you could have just said you were 21 and then not ordered a drink and it would have all been fine. But I mean, it's, it's about so much more than that, right? Because that establishment can get in a lot of trouble. for Right. Having you there. Right. That's true. And also really quick, guys. Um, by the way, if you haven't followed Laura, please be sure to do that. I have her stuff down below in the description and also in the chat is a pinned comment. And if you want her Instagram, uh, that is also linked right here in the chat. Guys, go follow Laura on Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff. Um, I put that all in the all in the description below. Uh, go check her out. <laughs> I'd love to have you. Go everybody. I get better about Twitter. I'm trying to, like, I try to post more it's been so hard during um COVID too because i just feel like not much has been going on for me you know what i mean like not much that i would that's interesting to talk about or the things that are interesting and you want to talk about you've signed an nda yeah. and you can't talk about it that's really tricky you can't you can't and people don't understand that too and i think uh, i think a lot of these a lot of big time celebrities have kind of ruined it for us in a way mm-hmm. like people think that uh, people think that NDAs are fun and like funny like oh yeah just break this or oh leak you leak that and I'm like guys you don't understand like I-, I get it's a joke to you but for us if we leak something like that could be the end of it like that's the end of our job and if I'm your relationship right like if I'm a celebrity in a Marvel movie and I've already done like two hit films with them I'm the main character like what you think they're gonna replace me no <laughs> but <Right>. um <laughs> like on the other hand as me just uh just a, a voice actor where people do get replaced all the time in this in this industry uh they do. that's where it gets a little scary so that we kind of have a little like little scare <laughs> so yeah well and it's interesting to me how people just seem to know stuff before i do sometimes like fans will like ask you about something and you're like oh is there a new game out <laughs> like i didn't even know yeah. like, you know it's, like people always seem to know but yeah you the, the ndas that you sign associated with this stuff are really strict and in, uh, something else that's really common is scripts you're auditioning with for things aren't the real scripts because they're so worried about them getting out that what you're auditioning with isn't from the actual thing you're auditioning for right right you never know what um what you kind of can talk about what you can't talk about like i don't know yeah. it's it's a little it's a little scary but i don't think people realize like yeah unless you are some irreplaceable person i um, mean maybe maybe fans maybe fans do see you as irreplaceable uh i don't know but then again there there are other things too like i know uh i know tom holland uh did some fun stuff for marvel um but him like leaking the nda was part of their pr stunt right Cause oh, they, it? yeah because they thought it would be funny so they so they made it like a like a pr thing like oh yeah just pretend like uh like we're gonna send you the script and have the name of the whole thing on it and and make sure you, and he opened it like the wrong way up on purpose uh but it was it was meant to be it was meant to be that like it was meant to be a be a joke so um so yeah i don't know there's there's certain things where they where they can do it but um but yeah it's it's i was listening to some actor be interviewed about something and someone said oh so you're going to be doing this and this and the actor there's this pause and they said okay has that been announced like because they were they're like they're like i'm just living in fear of accidentally mentioning it um, because they've known about it for a long time that, you know, they're like, when does the rest of the world know about yeah. it? That's sometimes really tough because it is hard. To, like I'm actually very often don't even tell like my friends and family about things that I'm working on 
because I wouldn't want them to accidentally say it. Because once you know things, it's really hard not to. It's yes. hard to not accidentally be like, oh, because when I was working on Genshin or something like that. Sorry. Or someone talking yeah, about you might mention it and not meaning to blab it. I mean, my family has certainly done it over many other things in my lives where I've been like, don't tell anyone this. And then I'll just find out they've just randomly told people. Totally, totally. Once people know, what and do they say? Three people can keep a secret if two of them are dead. <laughs> Yeah, it's scary. Um, and it's scary for me too, especially like doing doing some of these streams and um, and whatnot, because uh, I guess I shouldn't really go into much detail, but I do know a little bit more than like the average person on like this game and other games um, for, for, for general reasons or <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, I just have to be careful not to talk about it or, you know, sometimes things get leaked and I'm not really supposed yeah. to touch on the leaks. So I try not to uh, try not to really acknowledge them. But then like just because I'm working on so many different games, my brain is mush. Uh, I'll see something and I'm always like, oh, wait, I don't know if I am allowed to talk about that. OK, just and, and it's and it turns out it's totally fine and it's totally released but I don't talk about it or I purposefully avoid it because I'm so scared that it was one of those things that I hadn't seen, so. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's no, tricky. I hear you. It is. And I would never want to ruin the rollout that the company wanted to have for it. Definitely. And also right now, just to let you know what I'm doing is I'm sort of going back. Uh, I'm going oh, you back. You want to find out what happens to me? Yeah, I'm trying to pick the... Um, pick the option that I didn't pick before. So what did you pick last time? Was it small talk or nothing to say? I can't remember I'm what one you picked. Small talk. I know. I don't remember either because I questioned myself so much. <laughs> uh let's see. Um maybe the frequent small talk. I know that she's Oh, I think I didn't. I think I picked this one, so I'm gonna pick this one. That's a possibility. Okay. In other words, we just need to make Quinn realize that this time is different. For example, by sending him a little gift. Even Quinn would notice the difference a gift would bring. I wonder, do you give him a gift in every? What kind of? Oh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it shouldn't matter. It's the thought that counts. Sure? Wait, no, we chose, we, we chose the, chose the yeah. Matters. Yeah, the other one. No matter what okay. kind of yeah, relationship yeah, yeah. two people share. But I don't have any experience in this area. I'm sure you're right. Then if the gift doesn't matter, the choices are limitless. Do you have any ideas? Sending a Mondstadt grilled fish <laughs> should be, should be night, should be fine. <laughs> huh. well, this yeah, we didn't get that one before. This is all new. Okay. Um, make a serving of Mondstadt grilled fish. Do I have to make this or can I buy it? That's the other cool. <laughs> <laughs> that is, uh, that's that so funny. A funny reaction. <laughs> that's the. Can we just... I take it you don't cook, Zach? Um. <laughs> Well, I cook lean cuisines, but uh, <laughs> hey, what is what's happening over here? Uh, oh, did you say my name? Oh, I think this is for another quest. Looks like I beat you here. Um, I'm gonna get through uh, this. Timaeus. I did not mean to jump into this other quest. Uh, sucrose has me deciphering an alchemical. So get me out of here. No. But of course. Alchemy is an ancient and mystical. I didn't mean to run into. Yeah, oh, why time, not just ask the amazing Albedo? Ooh, okay, yes. all right. I like this quest, too. even though well, that's not what I, I wanted to do here. Do you end up on a side <laughs> quest all of a sudden? Yeah, I ran into a to like a cutscene of something else because it was right. Wait, no. But we're still talking about making a grilled fish, right? Uh, no, it's like a whole separate thing now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But no, I'm trying to get out of this so I can go back and make that grilled fish. I'm sorry, guys. I'm gonna skip through this. If I may be so bold, could you take this recipe to Mr. Albedo? Okay, I will take it. Don't worry, guys. I'll go over to Koi Dao's house right now. I'll just go visit him. I'll drop in and I'll 
I'll give him the recipe. Um, okay, cool. I think you can cook you can cook right here. What did they oh, say I was you. supposed to make? A grilled Don't fish? fish? I don't even see it. Oh, um, was it called a Monstat grilled fish? She called it a Monstat grilled fish, but I don't know. Uh, Wait, maybe is it in here? Do I have the, the recipe? Does it say how can you make it if they haven't... I wonder what, what happens in that case if you don't have the recipe. I think they maybe they gave it to me and I have it. Am I is there something I'm missing here, guys? It's been getting Scroll crazy. up. Oh, Monstat grilled fish. Oh, it's this little thing. Oh. This is it. it. It's on a kebab, that's why you Oh. Perfect. Okay. But you only why only three out of five? What'd you do that made you lose two points? <laughs> I oh 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 so that's a that's your like cooking a fit uh proficiency so once you've oh. once you've uh, hit that meter a certain number of times then you can auto cook it How am I ever going to get Quinn to listen to me? and then you don't have to keep doing that little mini game uh monstat grilled fish okay I've often said that I would bring him lunch. I'm judging you too would this really work? Well, since it's Noelle's recommendation, I'll give it a try. Will she will she listen for once? Oh, I hope B, please. These intentions. And I hope we were Turns out he time. is uh he's like vegan or something. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> all hell breaks loose. I hope we were But now's not the best time to disturb them. I don't maybe this well, Apologies, by the way. I said we would take a break and ended up bothering you instead. No, that's not what I'm saying. Well, oh, maybe that is what I'm saying. I don't know. Just let me know. <laughs> I can whip something up for you right away. No whipping anything up. You're taking a break, remember? No, no whipping anything uh, up. Sorry. Old habits die hard. It's been you know... I, I'm still a little worried about how B is doing. There's no stopping okay, let's uh, let's see how that went. Given that grilled fish, I'm curious. Oh. B? Oh, hi, Noel. So, uh oh, <clears throat> did you get a a date with Quinn? <sighs> I barely want to talk about it. I hadn't even given him the Monstat grilled fish when he muttered something about not having an appetite and not wanting to eat. I can't force him to eat, can I? Looks like I'll just have to try to ask him out some other time. I, I must apologize. Next time, I'll help you find a much better gift. No need. I love how Noelle just took that on. <laughs> I was worried and dumped everything on you. Yeah, you did, B. She did, seriously. Noelle can't be good at everything. That's right, she can't. But she is. It, B is the problem. <laughs> oh. It's okay. This isn't your fault. I don't blame you. I... I have to get going. Oh, please. Take care. Everything okay? I'm, Shouldn't blame us. I'm fine. <laughs> that's the worst thing. That's that's the worst thing for people to ask me when things are not when okay. You're not fine. Like everything okay? <laughs> for some reason, if they said if they said anything else or were like even harsher, I'd be like, fine. They're like everything okay, and that's when you burst out into tears. Like no, it's not. No. <laughs> it's the worst. Everything is terrible. It's just, I feel bad that I couldn't help be. It's impossible to be an expert at everything. You're not wrong. But if I give up so easily, then the next time someone needs help... <laughs> Who's that dude just walking through? Oh, yeah, he's just, you know, a knight or something. <laughs> he's uh, patrolling the area. It's so funny, I wonder if I left it on this screen if he makes a full circle around the thing and comes yeah, walking through that, again. See the shadow? There's some kind of a shadow coming behind her. Oh, and yeah, him. that's like the... I think that's the windmill up above. The windmill. Okay. And then there's this guy looking down at 
something. I don't and know. what? The body he buried in yeah. that flower bed? <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> I may not know much about this sort of thing, but at the very least, I should try to learn something about it. I'm... I'm going to the Knights of Avonia's library. There must be some guidance there on the subject of love. The next time I encounter a situation like this, I'll be able to help. Alright guys, there he is, he's walking back through. Oh, so now we go to the library. Oh yeah! What is this dude looking at? Oh. Oh, well. And then he goes back. Can you talk to him? Stanley, Stanley, your name shall never be forgotten. Why are you repeating your own name? I'm simply lamenting the past, lamenting the past. That's exactly why I'm do what I'm doing. Why would I lie about it? Oh. Not defensive at all. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with this guy. I'm going to leave him alone, though. Um. It's kind of creepy. <laughs> All right, come on. Let's see if he'll give us a wind blade. Okay, never mind. Whoa. It's like <laughs> it's gambling in a different way. People in the chat are saying you can control it, right? Oh no, you can't. It's it's random. <laughs> oh. I thought they I thought that's what they were saying, but yeah, yeah, you can't you can't get them to say it. Otherwise, it's just a just a grunt. Right. Uh, goodbye. <laughs> I'm just trying to get in the library, sir. There she is. Oh, <laughs> no stairs for you. <laughs> yeah, I never Since use the stairs. Noticed, Not even in I real life. can let you lend a hand. <laughs> That's how it works. When you meet the person who inspires your affections, you have to find a way to do things together with them. Hmm. Even if I'm not old enough to drink, I should still learn to discuss the different qualities of wine. I see. So you need to know how to make yourself interesting, to draw people's attention. What? Oh, oh, what sorry. Is... I didn't see you there. She's reading I something. Was in concentration. I borrowed every book on love from the library that I could find. When I finished reading them, that's why she's I'll so find shy. Able to give decisive <laughs> recommendations for next time, even if it is me. So, what books do we have here? Well, let's see. For example, Vera's Melancholy, Heart of Clear Springs. Well, all of them contain detailed records of the experience of love. As a maid, my experience leaves a lot to be desired. So I found the quickest way was to take examples from the classics. There's also a guide to tavern chat and shortcuts to love. I wonder what is in a guide to tavern chat. A guide to tavern chat? That'd be like, it. Yeah, bar chat. Can I buy you a beer? <laughs> <laughs> hey, can I buy you a beer? And uh, yeah. yeah, so what What brings you here, buddy? What, uh... what brings you here? Or um, what are you drinking? <laughs> What else would you say to people at a bar? I don't even know. Just... Want to play darts? <laughs> <laughs> or, or pool if they have the pool table. Um, yeah. <laughs> that is so funny. Is Anyone sitting on this bar stool? <laughs> and of course, there are even books that focus on theories of love. Oh, and then there's this one. This book's about... Mm, hmm. What? Hmm? What's this book about? N no, nothing. This book, it's too early to read this book. Something that made her blush. It's too early to read this but book. Let's look at another one. You have to learn the basics first, after all. Uh, so this book Too is about... advanced. Huh? <laughs> Same as that one? <laughs> I guess this must be a pretty... Poor Noelle. Common topic. What kind of books is Lisa giving her? <laughs> right? She sent her to the romance section. <laughs> it looks like I 
Still have a lot to learn. Jack, do you do audiobooks? I don't. I mean, yeah, no, I haven't really I haven't really ventured into that part of voiceover. Do you? I do. Really? Have you done any any cool books that you've really liked? You know, the, I've been doing like there's a like kind of a mystery romance series. That's what made me think of it as her is talking about romance books that I've done for a few years now. Yeah. Uh, so I, that one, I just the, one of the reasons I was living in Portland and there just wasn't a ton of work sometimes there. And so I actually did this. It was like a industrial and I, I filmed it in Idaho out of town for like a week. And one of the girls on the job with me did audiobooks, um, and she kind of told me how to do them and how she got into them. And I thought, oh well, I'm not doing much. I should I should try it. Yeah. So I did for like three three books. I booked all three, which is kind of great odds on your first time yeah. out. I didn't really know what I was doing, so I auditioned for all three, booked them, and then within like a week, booked a play <laughs> down in Florida oh, and no. had like to complete three books. <sighs> In a month, I think, because I think I was leaving in a month, and it was brutal because I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> I thought I had all this time, and so uh, this was before the mystery romance books. So, I, and they were nonfiction books. Yeah. I had auditioned for three nonfiction ones, which means you have to look up all the words you don't know, um, you know, pronunciations of famous names and places and things like that. And one of them was just really boring. Like it just turned. It was like reading someone's really bad, really long thesis. Um, and it was kind of brutal. And so I, the first book I recorded, when I got to the end, I had to go back and re-record the first three chapters of the book because it sounded like a different project because I had learned so much oh. in the recording, like, you know, how to fix mistakes and different things about levels and all these things right. that I didn't have any technical proficiency in. Um, I ended up having to go back and re-record that book. But I remember just trying to get them done was so hard because I was new, slow, still learning all the tech stuff, and then under this incredibly tight timeline to be ready to leave town. Totally. Because I couldn't record them out of town because of where I was. I was going to Florida. I didn't know what kind of a house I was going to be in, where I was staying, and thank God I didn't because that house was like all tile floors. And there's, I mean, I could barely record auditions. Like to record auditions in that house, I had to sit on my bed with the covers over me to kind of create like a sound booth. And it's Florida. It's hot. Yeah. So I'd be like, suffocating under these blankets like trying to record auditions but i never could have made it through a book to get that yeah to get that acoustic space i can't imagine doing the audiobooks it just seems so um i don't know it just seems so tedious trying to trying to it's do hard. all that it's hard like a lot of people have talked to me about getting into them and i'm like yeah it's totally possible but um it's harder than it seems yeah. um and you and definitely if you don't like the book like if you get into a book that's just not that interesting, that's rough because you're going to read it at least three times. You're going to read it once before you start. Then you're going to do the actual recording of it. And then you have to go back and listen. This is if you're, you know, producing it yourself, which right. is what I was doing. And, you know, if, you, if there are audiobooks where you go in and you just read and you leave and an engineer handles everything else. But, um, yeah, for those ones that you do yourself, you, if you don't like the book, that could, that's probably your worst case scenario right there is having to read a book you don't like three times on a time limit definitely definitely yeah. yeah i can't imagine but bless you as soon as you said three audiobooks at the same time oh, <laughs> i already know what the deadlines are and how crazy some of that some of that can be and then the play oh no like, yeah it was just my inexperience of not i didn't really know how it all worked you know someone had kind of told me about it but all of a sudden i'm looking at these dates and thinking well you know, if I'm reading a book in my head, I can read a book in a couple days if it's not yeah. super long or super difficult, but it's completely different. And it recording. gets all technical when you actually have to record yourself and make sure you're, you know, it, uh, when you make a cut that there's not a random <gasps> breath there oh. because then it's going to sound like a big <clears throat> and <laughs> well, the things you don't even think about of like, you know, if, if uh, you're recording in the winter. And you're recording at home and the heat comes on in your house and it changes the room tone. You either have to go turn your heat off or wait for the heat to run. It's, you know, things like that. Right. That you, like any level of background noise is a big issue. Um, your stomach growling, you know, bumping against something like all those things that you're going to have to go back and edit out. Um, 
Yeah. Definitely. And then like, and for sure things like if your voice is tired from one day, like if you did something that like I couldn't go re record a video game and do a bunch of efforts and be screaming and yelling and dying and doing all those things and then come back and jump in and do an audiobook that same afternoon and sound the same. Right. Right. You know, your voice gets roughed up in those situations. And, but then realizing from chapter to chapter, if a chapter sounds different or you've got a cold in the middle of working on a book. Um, Definitely. You know, then you have to wait until you sound like yourself again. And that sometimes takes a while. And when you're working on a time limit, it's hard. Right, right. And you can only work so much. That's something that I had to learn within the past year. Yeah. Um, that there's only so many things that I can work on and put myself on. I've had to, I even had to turn some projects down when I, I wouldn't have done that. But I had so many other things happening. They said, guys, I can't scream for for hours on end on this project. Yeah. I'm already screaming for hours on end on this other project and and I can't turn this project down because I've been committed to this thing. Like, the, so there's just so many, there's so many different little factors to it sometimes. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I, I hear you and scheduling yourself smartly and having, having my agents understand too, every single project I work on, I have my agents always make sure they ask about the vocal stress and how crazy it's going to be because if I'm doing a commercial for a, for a company and it's very important, um, I'm probably going to want to do that commercial as my first thing of the day before I go on and do my four hours of a, of a video game that could get kind of intense. Even if we do those battle lines at the end of the recording session, it's still going to be, it's going to be rough. So yeah. you have to do, you do it. You said you have a booth. Do you live in a house or do you live like with an apartment where like neighbors can oh, hear you? Yeah, no, I'm I'm in a house. So I have a booth. I'm, I'm in an apartment and I have to tell you, like, there's times where I feel so sorry for my neighbors where I'm like screaming, you know, like when you're doing all those screaming, dying, yeah. fighting noises. Where I'm like, they just must be wondering what in the heck is going on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, police have showed up at my house a few times because my neighbors. They getting, really? Ah! <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Oh. Well, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> this is a true story. This is, I felt so bad. So um, there was a brief period of time, like right before I moved down here where I had like, I was, I was just kind of in between places because I knew I was coming here. So I just rented a room in a house for just like a couple months. And the woman who owned it, um, she was actually really hard of hearing. So she never could hear me when I was recording stuff. And I had like a kind of like a living space down in the basement. It had like, you know, a living room space and a bathroom and a bedroom. And um, she had a house cleaner that would come in, you know, and so it was the house cleaners day to be there. And so I was like, oh, I'll just, you know, I'll go for a run and I'll be gone for a few hours while she does that. And then, you know, I'll come back when she's done. And I had some lines to record for a video game and they were like demon lines, like, you know, like a kind of a oh, demon no. creature. Thing. And it was like, um, I told you to leave, but you wouldn't listen. It was like something like that. Yeah. And so I, and, and the, I met the house cleaner on my way out and she was, was she, so cool. she, English wasn't her first language. So we, you know, just kind of we're like, oh, hello, hello. But I could tell that she didn't really understand most of what I said. Right. Um, so I went away. I came back. She's gone. And I go down and I'm recording these lines. And then all of a sudden, I just hear these very fast footsteps and the door slam. And I'm like, oh, my God, she was in the house. And she's just hearing this demon voice coming up from the basement. Like, I don't know that she could understand what was being said, but I had to go to the woman in the house. And I said, I might have scared off your house cleaner because I don't know if she, you know, she doesn't understand who I am and what I do. And then I'm down there. And the line I was saying was, I told you to leave, but you wouldn't listen. And I was doing that over and over again and trying to sound more and more demonic with it. She thought she was, <laughs> I she know. Thought she was I like know. in a horror movie. <laughs> and I didn't come in through the front door. I came in through a different door that went down to the basement. So I don't know where she was in the house when I came back. If she heard me come in, she just suddenly is hearing this really creepy leave. voice coming up through the floor probably right um, right i felt so bad i was like i hope she doesn't <laughs> quit because that would kind of be my fault <laughs> oh that's great <laughs> i feel oh, i swear i know i have i know i have weird stories similar to that as well um but oh, i can't think of anything well something that randomly happened the other day was um since we're doing all of this at home recording now, uh, I have a cat. He's very loud. He's a very loud cat. He's a he's like a little bangle cat, and he goes meow. 
like he sa <laughs> he actually sounds like that. That is the best way I can recreate his meows. And uh, even in my booth, um, you know, they 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 ask me to turn up my microphone gain, and uh, like what? Wait, hold on a sec. Wait, hold on. Let's pause for let's pause for a minute. What is that in the background? And I'm and I'm and I just hear my cat. Meow. <laughs> yeah, he is a very, he is the loudest cat ever. That, um, yeah, he's super I had a, loud. A min I had a miniature pincher who, when I would record any kind of animation or cartoon type voice, you know, when I was going way up here into that kind of thing, she would sit outside the booth and bark at me because I think she thought it was someone else that was there. <laughs> Like, you're making it really hard to get this audition done. Oh, that was that was one thing that I did. Speaking of like, yeah, with uh with dogs, um, I once went to visit my cousin, and uh, it was after I figured out that I could kind of do this lower, like a like a deep deep voice, and I would do that in front of the dog. That's um, amazing. I would not. I would not think your voice could oh. do that. That was amazing. <laughs> oh, thanks. I played this other character called the Moon Carver. I'm sure my 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 chat knows this, but uh, I feel like a broken record always saying it. But yes, I also played this character called the Moon Carver, and he talks like this in Genshin Impact. And so he has like this, you know, very very epic sounding character. Um, but I did this voice once. Uh, you sound in like a sound like what that oh sorry Are you Laura. Me? oh yeah i think you i think you cut off there uh what, what were we saying oh I, I was saying you sound like a totally different person when oh. you do that like i would never like that's great like that that's in your repertoire oh it's i really didn't hear good. that oh <laughs> thanks it's a it's a double-edged uh, sword sometimes because they bring me in to do a bunch of stuff and you know trying to scream in in that voice is a is a throat ripper for sure. Right. But, That's really um, hard. To do. <laughs> yeah. So I did yeah. this. I did this voice though in front of um in front of my cousin's dog, which is just like a big uh, big chocolate lab, and the dog would every time I did it would get extremely defensive and start barking at me and like co completely shift mood. Um, I've never seen anything like it before, and I've tried it with other <laughs> animals too. Just kind of like go into the voice and see if anybody in in a lot of other animals nobody cares. So like oh yeah whatever. But this dog thought i was like possessed by a demon or something it was so weird um, hey, um you do in the voice say do you want a treat do you want a treat <laughs> <laughs> try that next time <laughs> do you want a cookie that's what i say with my dog i'm like hey you want a cookie <laughs> yeah do you, do you talk to the dog in different voices <laughs> um <laughs> Not really. <laughs> it's kind of like when people ask me, like, yeah, do you mess with people in the drive through I'm like, no, nah, those people don't get paid enough <laughs> for me to be messing with right. them. <laughs> I'm like, no, I don't mess with anybody. Um, they're like, oh, yeah, you should totally do this impression or, like, do some kind of accent or use your voice. I'm like, nah, 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 nah. I mean, maybe I would do it if it was one of my friends working at McDonald's. Then I would, then I'd mess with them just to mess with them. But uh, not a random person. I'm like, nah, nah, it's fine. Um, yeah. Oh, if you guys want to see my cat, it's uh, it's on my Instagram. If if you haven't followed that, my Instagram is just my name, Zach Aguilar. You can check that down below. And while you're at it, go follow Laura too on on her Instagram. And I believe your Instagram. I already have your links down below. Is it Laura yeah. Faye Smith? Oh, I'm gonna look it up. <laughs> yeah, that is it. Just uh, oh, Laura right on. Faye with an E. F A Y. Hang on, I'm looking for your cat. Oh, yeah, he should be on there. He might be down below somewhere. He's, uh... Oh, there he is. Yeah, yeah, he is big. He's as big as the dog. He's a, is you he... in the... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, he That's is a, so cute. He is a big cat. He's like a... I don't know if you guys can see this. He's a bangle. But you can check him out on my Instagram if you want to. He's a, he's a baby. Well, oh, he's... we just got another ending. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We did. So this is the this is the book, um, the, uh, the library ending, I guess. So what whatever kind of book she's reading, we don't we don't know. But, books about love. Yeah, something uh, something that oh, this I am is a cute one. Too young for. We wrote 
There's another picture where he wrote, two seconds later, he may or might have attacked me, and you can see his teeth. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my cat is a... He is a funny... He's a funny one. Um, when he was young, too, and people don't believe me, he actually used to play fetch. Uh, I would throw him a little toy, and he would go and fetch it for me and bring it back to me. In his little cat mouth. <laughs> Weirdly enough. How long have you had him? Oh, for about 16 years. <laughs> so he's an oh, old, he's, old. He's, yeah. he's an old man, but. <laughs> I just cut past a picture in here for in New York City at Nintendo World. I see you took a picture of Mario and not Rosalina. What's that about, Zach? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> um, you know, it was just, uh... <laughs> no, I remember exactly when I went to Nintendo World. It was so magical, but I had, I, I literally remember running there. I might have ran through Times Square. I, I'm not entirely sure, but I just remember running as fast as I could to make it there before they closed uh, because I was up there for that convention and people don't know that too. Like when, when we do do the cons and stuff, it's a lot of work. Like they had me scheduled for so many different things like signings, uh, meeting people. Then I had like a panel. Then I had like a photograph thing. And then I was interviewed by, uh, by people there doing press at the con. And so my entire every single day is just gone. Um, and I knew I said I have to make it there. So I I'm glad I did. <laughs> so what's your favorite Mario game? It's my favorite Mario game. Probably um, probably Super Mario World, actually. Uh, take it way back to the um, the Super Nintendo. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's one of the first ones I played. That, that's Super Mario one. World. I have this weird nostalgic memory of my dad and I sitting on a couch playing the Super Nintendo while um, I think it was like around Christmas time. We were like drinking eggnog. So I have this I have these weird nostalgic memories of uh, yeah, of just of just playing that playing that game. My college roommate got it. Um, and uh, oh, my God, I can't believe we didn't flunk out. Like when we we just that's all we did was play that game. Like one of us, we would be playing in shifts. Like someone would be just like obsessively playing, and someone would come in from class and it'd be like, "I learned how to fly today," and be like, "Oh my god, show me how to do that!" And so then we'd play and play and play, and yeah, it was so obsessive. That's awesome. But I still can hear the song in my head, like just hearing it over and over and over again. Oh, also, somebody uh, t in my somebody told me to read Noelle's notes. Um, so that's what I'm, I don't know if you know this, but she, she was writing down notes. During, yeah, no, I did know about this. She's like, make time to be together alone. Give him a cake you made yourself. <laughs> Words of counsel and wisdom are penned here in a lovely hand. And unfortunately, Unless Grusha, you're a terrible cook. <laughs> <laughs> some of the text has been arbitrarily struck out, seeming the result of the owner's emotion suddenly running high. Oh, interesting. So she got like nervous at the end or something. I think that's what they're saying. I think Noelle's talking about whoever wrote the book. Oh, I see. I could be wrong about that, but I, I think was like, that's what the... I was like, was she writing the... Oh, because it says her study notes. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, they're, well, because they're quotes, I... Uh... Who's shaky towards the end? Oh, yeah, I, I just skipped right by it, but... Um... Oh, oops. I, think I, should take a I didn't need to... Something okay. else to distract myself. Then again, perhaps I should finish this one first. Just the one, right? She wants to read the romance book. Does she say anything else? No. Oh no, she says the same thing. Again. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this is cool. I mean, I just, I love, I love the world of this game and going around, checking out all the different scenery them having a library is awesome. They have like a huge, uh, like a cathedral thing too. I will Elon say. Musk. Is, she, is she related? To, did you see Elon Musk down there? Is she related to Elon Musk? Yes, yes. So this is, uh, they decided to uh, to put him in the game. Uh, I think they're adding Teslas in the next patch, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, no, it is funny. It's a, it's a funny coincidence. That's the first thing I thought too. Um, so yeah, I hope all you Genshin fans are looking forward to that. We'll be able to hop in our own little Genshin Teslas and uh, drive coming soon in the next patch. Um, 
just like mow down the hilly churls with your Tesla. Yeah, that is, that's it. And your Tesla can even speak to the hilly churls. Uh, you press <laughs> a little button and it'll talk to them for you. And so you can choose whether you want to mow them down or if you want to be friends with them. They'll hop in your Tesla and you'll go on a whole little ride around the world of Tevat. It's like, it's better than quick traveling. It's who needs uh, who needs to who needs to run around and explore when you got a Tesla? It can take you around and do it for you. So I hope you're all looking forward to that in version 1.5 coming soon. Uh, <laughs> this is a dumb question, but Teslas are electronic cars, right? They're not. Yeah, gas. yeah, yeah. They're all electric, all electric cars. Um, they're pretty neat, actually. You can. Um, the autopilot feature inside the Tesla works pretty well, but just think of it more of like cruise control, very advanced cruise control. If you if you know anything about the autopilot in it, you can get inside a Tesla. Yeah. Oh, sorry. What'd you say? Do you have one? Maybe. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> you're, you're, you're talking very knowledgeably about it, so. Uh, yeah, well, I'm a, I've I've been a fan of the uh, I've been I've been a fan of the company. I followed a lot of their a lot of their stuff. Uh, just you know, because I know because I know they're I don't know the electronic electric technology is sort of on the uprise too. I've bought in stocks of Tesla, and I would not recommend anybody else do that because the stock is so volatile. You cannot trust it. Elon's gonna make a uh, Elon's gonna make Elon makes a tweet and the stock tanks, or he makes a tweet and the stock exponentially goes up uh <laughs> you can't you can't really predict it so uh yeah guys stop talking about my my you mean my super my supercharged honda civic uh <clears throat> anyways uh that's my tesla Shh, don't don't tell uh don't tell laura um but yeah no i guess we finished uh we finished both the stories and laura i just want to say thank you so much for your time i know we've been here for like over two hours now which is very crazy to say oh, it was a pleasure it was so nice to, to talk to you too because we hadn't met so yeah i know was lovely really great meeting you i know that um and, and i'll just say it while we're still here on the stream uh, i noticed i don't know how like familiar familiar you are with discord but we do have our own we have our own little genshin server that i know you're in because i think chris invited you in there and sometimes we we play games in there or uh, we hang out, so uh, I know things are always crazy, especially in the acting world. But if you ever have time, or later on at night, and you ever want to hop in there and say hi to some people, I'm sure uh, the people that haven't met you yet would be more than thrilled to to say hi, or possibly even play some games sometime when uh, when you're available. That's that would be totally fun. And do you guys usually announce it on Twitter or something? Like if I saw it on your Twitter, that you guys is that typically yeah. is it kind of by you, or yeah. do you guys usually? Um, it's kind of random. So sometimes people stream and they'll, uh, and they'll say, Hey, yeah, I'm gonna, uh, Hey, I'm gonna do this or I'm gonna do that. And, uh, and so sometimes it will be like an official thing. And then other times people are just hanging, then hanging out in there and they're off stream. So, uh, so then they just kind of are in there chilling, maybe playing a game and talking about real life and whatnot. But <laughs> yeah, that sounds fun. I'm yeah. so glad to know about all this. Yeah, no, please, please feel feel welcome. Uh, I know that's why I can't remember. I think our director, I believe our director is the creator of that server. So, um, so yeah. And also, uh, uh, what else was I going to say? Um, we we do have this thing that we do, and okay. it's called Among Us. Have you ever heard of Among Us? No, what is that? So, so Among Us is like a deception game that you can play. And um <laughs> long story short is you kind of go around if you're there are two imposters out of a group of 10 people, two imposters and eight people are the crewmates and it's and it's an actual video game that we all play. It's it's very cute. Um oh. uh and we've been playing we've been playing that game and having fun kind of going around, but but the the basis of the game is that if you're one of the imposters, uh, you have to lie to people, and your goal is to go around and kill as many people as you can until you're found out or until you've won the game. Um, so that's been kind of fun to play. So if you're ever down to play that, that would be very fun to to get well, you. You know, in. I didn't. 
did confess earlier what a terrible liar I am, so we'll see how I do. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be surprised. I thought I mean I thought I was a I thought I was a bad liar um before I got into before I got into playing the game and then I don't know, something about it. I just I know, I just got used to it. <laughs> that sounds so bad. <laughs> actually was recently on an episode do you know that um game show to tell the truth oh no no i don't it's, it's old like, I mean, the original version was old like out in the 70s or something but they've revived it and so i did this episode so what it is is you've got a celebrity panel and then you've got three people that are two of them are imposters and one of them is a real person who has a certain skill or a job or something interesting about them. And so the celebrity panel asks you questions and tries to figure out who's the real person and who are the imposters. Um, and so I did that and I was actually pretty good at that. Like two people, I was an imposter and two people thought I was the uh, two of three voted for me as being the real person on that. So I guess I did okay in that one, but they also, you know, prep you a bit with that, you know, where you get to, you get information, you know, about the person so you can kind of believably pretend to be them. Right, right. Would you say that you're good at, okay, so would you say you're good at convincing people of your innocence, though, if you put it the other way around? In the context of a game, yeah, probably. You know, I wouldn't be good at it in real life. Like if I was guilty and I tried to convince people I'm innocent, I'm terrible in that situation because I have a really hard time right. not admitting when I've done something wrong, like owning my behavior. Like that's kind of a big thing for me because I want it from other people. So I feel like I have to do it in return. Um, in the context, but I mean, when you think about it as actors, we're making stuff up all the time and pretending to be something we're not. So it doesn't bother me in that situation. So in the context of a game, I'd probably do okay. I just wouldn't be good at it in real life. Yeah, yeah, it's just kind of, it's just acting. It's not lying, right guys? Right, right. everybody? It's just for fun. It's it's acting. We're, we're not, yeah. It's not, not terrible, deceitful people, we're just actors. <laughs> yeah, it's not, yeah. <laughs> we're professional liars. <laughs> I feel like that's what's made it very interesting in um in the games I've had with with some of the other cast members um just because everybody is an actor so it's very difficult to to see some people have different strategies they'll go into the game and be all like I don't know what I'm doing I hardly have played this game this map what there's a snack machine over there I'm looking at you Koi um and so that'll this be like really the strategy fun, yeah. yeah no I'll it would totally be yeah, it'd be awesome to get you in on it. And of course, like if you're if you're too busy doing stuff, I totally understand. I know how it is. Uh, just I've been uh, me and uh, and the, me and Karina have been trying to uh, we've been assembling people to to play um, to play the game. And it's been a little tricky because everyone's schedules are so different, of course, even right. just as actors and when the weekend comes. So that's why I just want to say thank you so much again, Laura, for coming on this because you're taking time out of your Saturday to to uh, to come out here and be on the stream and guys once again if you haven't go check out laura's social medias there uh, i have one pinned in the comment i have one pinned down below in the description guys go check all of that out go make sure you go give her a follow and uh and thank her for for coming on this stream with me today because uh because i i know how it is the weekends are the weekends are sacred <laughs> well I had a great time. I'll come back anytime you want and then hopefully come play some of those other games with you guys too. Yes, we would love to have you, please. You're always welcome, totally. All right, guys, I guess I'm gonna end the stream great. here. So thank you all so much for coming and uh, and and have a good night. Uh, is there anything you wanna say to the viewers, Laura? Thanks for being here with us. And I just saw my phone and all these follows popped up. And thank you for that. It's going to be, you know, great to connect with you more on Twitter and Instagram. And thanks for playing Genshin. Awesome. And also, that's right, guys. Uh, really quick before I do, uh, I do in the stream, I will say I would like to confirm something. We're going to be polling for a child. We're going to be polling for child coming this this next week, uh, it's going to be on the 7th, I believe. That's what it's currently planned for, subject to change. We're going to be pulling for child, and we might have a special guest, <coughs> Griffin. Uh, but hopefully you guys will come by and check that out when that happens. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, Bye. everybody.